Welcome to Tabletop Topics. I'm your host, Jeff. And of course, Jeff. Um. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Seriously, seriously. Okay, all right. Seriously, seriously, okay. Seriously. Today, we have a, the long awaited special guest since episode two. Yeah, yeah, we've been talking about him for a while. For a while. For a while. He has ingratiated us with his presence. Yes, I am not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The one, the only. Caleb. Hello. My name is uh, My name is Caleb. Uh, I'm friends with Jeff, and I'm also friends with Jeff. Oh, yeah. Um, Thank you for gracing us with your presence, sir. Thanks Thank for you. having me on. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for coming. There's a, there's a long backstory to... <laughs> This recording. But, Would you uh, like to explain it or just um, uh, uh, just continue? See, well, I did everything right. See, because normally, sometimes when I fuck up, it's my fault. Twice. You know, but it was the software's fault this time. Mm -hmm. So I can sleep peacefully tonight. Knowing that it wasn't you. It wasn't me. Okay. So, but. That's it. That's, that's it. it. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's yep. about We're, it. Yep. We won't dive into it anymore. Yep. That's about it. So, uh. How's your day been so far, Caleb? Uh, not bad. Um, got up. Uh, actually, Brianna went to uh, first day of teacher boot camp today, or whatever for uh, school. So she was been she was she left at seven forty five. I was up when she got up. Holy I, shit! It, Is she still over there now? No, it was a uh, half day, I guess, for the first day. So she finished up around twelve and got home, and then uh, we went and got some food. She went. Out, she's out at Fort Myers Beach now with my family. Okay, uh, okay. hanging out. Me and Frank went for a walk and uh, took a nap. I woke up at 12. I don't have uh, many days off, really, so uh, sleeping until 12 for me was like a huge win. It wasn't even fully 12. It was, it was like 11.45. Yeah. But, yeah, and then drove out here and uh, hanging out now, yeah. having a good time. Did you have any advice for her when uh, she started um, or when she went? Good luck. Have fun. Bro, all the kids. What what grade is she teaching? Sixth grade. Sixth, sixth grade algebra. Ooh, that's yeah. when they start being rebellious and saying, "I don't have to listen to you. You're I not said my her mom." Earlier, I was like, do, "Are they doing live tests with the kids?" And she's like, "What do you mean live tests?" I was like, "Well, you know when you <laughs> go to a zoo and you know, <laughs> they want you to pet the animals. It's usually behind a cage." Yeah, like, I think um for for the first part of it, they brought her in and it was um. They introduced them and they said, this is a girl, a young sixth grade girl. Um, <laughs> usually they have four appendages and, you know, treat them, treat them nicely. See a full walk around, you yeah. know, do the inspection. Okay. So what is the temperament like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feed them, give them water. You know, you know, that's why. Teach them man. things. I can't. Uh, like, I really just tell them they're going to be great. Like, kids are cool. Don't get me wrong. But it's like... Especially when they're not your kids. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's like, true. that's not your kids. So the only thing you're expected is teach them the curriculum. But like, how do you, you're like essentially like a mini psychologist for the kids. Well, and that, that's actually, that's the thing too, her and I were talking about. So, um, these kids are young and they all have a lot of like big dreams or whatever that they want yeah. things they want to do. Crush and, it. Well, no, like, she, was, <laughs> she was she was saying. I'm too, joking, guys. Well, she was like, we, she was building something, and it didn't end up being as good as she wanted it to. And uh -huh. she was like, so that some basically, how am I gonna be able to inspire these kids or tell them that they can do anything when there are things that I myself can't do? Yeah. And I was kind of telling her like, you don't have to be able to do everything to tell somebody that they can do it. They can do it. Like you know, I know there's parents out there who aren't like the epiphany of health or athleticism right. and they raise professional athletes, 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 athletes you know well yeah it's like uh it's like when we were in elementary back in the 90s and they were telling us oh yeah you can be anything you want when you grow up and then reality hits in you well, we're in <laughs> you can be and do everything that you want we're in be. a time of peace you know i so understand the, i'm just, the, the I'm just giving an example very beautiful during that time. oh yeah 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 I don't know. I think I think kids can still do anything they want to I, it's just a lot here's the thing yeah. right. don't treat them like they're stupid no, they're not stupid. They are not stupid. <laughs> they're, they're smart. They're this smart generation is different. Head. This like, generation is different. And the thing about kids is they, not that they lack a filter, it's just like they haven't been conditioned to know that, okay, there are some things you... They haven't learned what's appropriate. Well, right. perfect example, Kayla's son, Logan. 
<clears throat> that kid's going to sixth oh, grade. Right, he right. is different. He he's is di- like, very smart. He's very smart. You know yeah, what I'm like, like we're literally having adult conversations with this kid. Yeah, he knows movie references. He knows old school. Uh, bro, he be teaching me stuff about shows I ain't never watched in my yeah, life. Yeah, shows rappers from the nineteen nineties to eighties. He knows uh, all their stars, history. And all everything. their history. Yeah, yeah dude. Th- this kid's different. Like we're but, gonna invite him on. But yeah, the show. just in general, you know what I'm saying? It's like they're not stupid. Yeah, this you generation don't have is to. Yeah, you don't have to like. Well, that's because, like, <clears throat> you look at things like TikTok, and I know a lot of people uh, don't think TikTok is good, but, man, you can learn a, a lot. A lot, yeah. And you could just be scrolling for however long and learning from those things. There's beneficial things to it and negative mm-hmm. aspects of it as well, but they have so much knowledge at their fingertips where... How do they curate it? Yeah, that depends too. But when that, I was that, little, I felt like it was so much harder to access this right. information. That's right. Yeah, that's well, true. you had to critically think. Like, anything that involved you looking for something more, you had to either go find a resource for it or, like, have someone in the profession really tell you about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's go to the library or let me read a book on it or something. Like, Mm -hmm. the internet wasn't like that. Now it's like, now there's so much information coming in, it's like, okay. How do you curate it? How do you curate Mm -hmm. it? You see what I'm saying? And I think that's one, I'm not a teacher, so I commend Brianna for doing this. Yeah, no, that, but, uh, that anybody that teaches it really yeah, respect. Yeah, absolutely. Mad respect. That's why I always say they should pay them what they're worth. I really I really do think that yeah. teachers should be making more. The people who are educating the future and taking mm. care of your children that's should be your making future. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the future of reason. Yeah, because that's four to six school. years of college plus a bachelor's degree or whatever degree that they get in there. But then I'm sitting there working at the grocery store and I make more than them. That doesn't make any sense. And that's what the problem is that the corporations that like pay their employees big companies make more money and they can pay them but i think uh schools are funded by governments government. and by and the well, government decides that where most of their funding where goes most of the funding and, yeah and generally taxes are viewed as a negative thing or they're funneled into a uh, different avenue so it's like nobody wants to pay more in taxes but they all want to have better schools better and schools. roads exactly look or what they're, they're doing play. in the cape they yeah. wanted to build more private schools cape raised their taxes they're like mm. That's, that's what you wanted, yeah. That's what you it's want. a give and take. See, but I wouldn't mind paying more money for in for, taxes right. if, my if I can, education system. For education, yeah, for definitely. better resources, I agree. you know, like human services and stuff like that. Absolutely. Why yeah. is that a bad thing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, people hear tax and it's just like... But a lot of people want their cake and they want to eat it too, and that's the biggest issue. Where like, do you think this money is going to come from? Exactly. It, but then you have the advent of private companies going into education mm-hmm. and hiring teachers on private like salaries salaries and yeah. stuff like that well i think one of the big uh, biggest things is like uh k through 12 is all it's free as mm-hmm. you can have a free option of it mm-hmm. so that everyone to me should go through that and have the basic education but then when it comes to college i think that's where big corporations doing their education through right. that or i think it would be so much better to see people say i want i know i want to work in technology i'm going to go and do an education program through mm-hmm. google and get the certifications that would be beneficial to me rather than go and get a degree in computer engineering right. from, I don't know, MIT, MIT and then exactly. turn around and then go to Google and, and then, then have go to do Google. certification mm-hmm. programs there to get certified to work on. On top of that, you're in debt, too. And then, yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. if c- companies were paying for it, you'd have a lot of people who would oh, yeah, have definitely. as much student debt. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? But, it, like, easier, yeah. doesn't the issue, like... What's the issue that arises in privatizing that? Well, like, it, they coexist with public education, but it's like you will start to see a separation of people who are privately educated versus public schooling. Because maybe, you know, a lot of teachers will see private uh, education is offering them better benefits, better lifestyle, stuff like that, and it's more tailored to their profession mm. you see what i'm saying what they went to school for if they want to specifically teach that to a young audience or whatever versus like a public school has stringent rules certain things you can like each state passes their own laws on what you can and can't teach <clears throat> and then like standardized testing there's different avenues of learning for each kid each kid learns differently mm-hmm. aren't they starting to take away like standardized te- standardized i thought they took that yeah they did right they yeah, already they, took they it got away. rid of FCAT yeah because i talked the, to the end of the end of course exam because yeah i talked to yeah, POC, yeah, 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 yeah i talked to apparently they just um um have to take a uh, uh the, the finals exam and then they have oh, to pass okay. it with a grade like a 
No. Kind of like uh, how you just you just have to pass the class. To do, Basically, yeah, that's it. Cl- yeah. A right. C plus in the class. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. right. Michael's girlfriend graduated high school, um, and she's not she she was eighteen, but mm-hmm. now she's nineteen. And I asked, do they still do FCAT and all that stuff like that? She's like, he said, no, they don't anymore. They just have to pass the finals in that course. In that course, yeah. I and then they just and, and, and then they can. And that's but and I yeah that's that's good. You know what I'm saying? But the, the issue that comes in is like where how ahead or behind is your curriculum? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like with private entities, they understand what their competition is. A oh. school in Fort Myers doesn't give a crap what's happening in a school in Ohio. Nope. No. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't benefit their economy. It doesn't. It, it's not really teaching what uh, what is required here. You see what I'm saying? So it's like that. That's why it's like I look at here. You know, it'd be better if uh, uh, like we offered like specialized uh, 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 private schooling. You know, for agriculture, that's a big thing. You see what I'm saying? Conservationism. Well, they have that in college, don't they? Isn't, like, Georgia a huge... Isn't there, like, a... Yeah, but you gotta go to Georgia. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You gotta go to... that. You see how that... Why don't we prime them earlier? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Prep them earlier. Like, teach them, like... Like, now, finance is a required course in... in, in High school now. Yeah, I've noticed that. That is true. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Ron I feel like that's a Pretty good thing. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Like that's because nobody how, teaches anybody right. money. Imagine you, you how much saying? that's gonna change society for the better. Yeah, because when we when a lot of them graduate, they'll know how to financially take care of themselves. Because like they always say, nobody teaches us money. They we will have, truly understand nothing is free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know nobody teaches like, us. In, nobody in teaches us. Except for a four hundred one k. Yeah. Except for, yeah. <laughs> that's a there long. you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, like nobody taught us money when we were in high school. It was. We, we graduated and we had to figure out ourselves. Either you're good with money or you're bad with money. But all these kids, if they're teaching nah, them now. Caleb was different. He, kinda, he scanned kinda. the room. He was like, y'all all fun of me, bro. <laughs> I'm doing something else. <laughs> uh, it was kind of a big nerd. <laughs> well, I got to Fort Myers High School when I was like picking electives. And I picked gym because I, like, I was playing sports. And then mm. I was uh, looking at all of them. I did do ceramics, but I think I could get three or four electives. And I, after that, I was like, Man, what what else should I do? And there's personal finance. So I was like, well. Oh, so they had personal finance yeah, when you went. Okay. Yeah, but it was an elective. You didn't have to take it. Yeah. Just okay. Could. So it we didn't, I didn't have that one so, back yeah. in back in my day. A lot of the kids that were in it though were just like, didn't give a crap. Just picked a class that they thought was going to be kind of mm. easy or whatever. Okay. But I did that one. I did I think um, some accounting class in high school, and then another. I did three finance classes in high school. Holy cow! And graduated with this like. Uh, Academy of Finance thing. Oh, wow. Just ah. for fun. See, I didn't have... We didn't have but any of that. Th- it was an option. Yeah, it was optional. It wasn't... It a, was optional. Now it's required because they notice how bad in debt and America I don't know is. Why, I don't know why I picked it. Well, for, for, Most kids probably wouldn't have. No, absolutely not. I wouldn't have thought of that because I had the same mind. Like, for me, it was no, just I more... parents. <laughs> 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 oh man, I'm dead. Holy shit! Cause like Florida's GDP is literally based off of tourism. Like, yeah, we're that's not true. The leader in like anything. we're dead. We're dead in the summer, but we're always yeah, busy. Yeah, what from, are we the leader in? From fall to spring, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Tourism, and, tourism. and retirement, and yeah. retirement. And retirement. Like, yeah, we're not really generating money. We're just well, Southwest Florida's becoming young. It's yeah, a lot of these developing cities. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. A lot, everyone's moving out of Miami. Yep, and moving here. And moving to rural areas. That's why we're having such a crazy. We had a thirty uh, percent influx of people moving from Miami and New too York. Too expensive. Because yeah. it's getting too expensive. But it's like, how are you competing with those education systems? Of, well, you know? Florida is very expensive to live in now, though. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know that, but yeah, like, yeah, it's they're selling you the lifestyle. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, I was told by um, a lady that moved from California to Florida. She's like, everything is the same. Besides you guys not paying the state tax, everything here is the same. Yeah. She literally told yeah. me. She told me that last week. Yeah. My buddy Eric up in Wisconsin, he's got a two-bedroom apartment. I mean, maybe a little older than mine, mm-hmm. but he pays, I think, twelve hundred a month. <laughs> I pay almost two grand a month. You know what I mean? Wow. I is think it, at it, some point he was paying a thousand for one of them, like cheap. That really hurts my cheap. Is he in a rural or big city area? He's okay. right outside of Milwaukee. Wow. I think he might even be in Milwaukee now at a townhome, but I don't know how much he's paying for That's that. That's wild. But still, I guarantee you he's not paying more than 1500 bucks a month. That's crazy. Because I'm paying 13, 
thirteen hundred for this. And this is the cheapest like like two bedroom I could find. Yeah, yeah, yeah thirteen hundred for this. Cause it's what was a five over one, a solid block and then wood everywhere, mm. and then they'll still charge you. That's an insane. arm. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's mine's super thin, man. I can hear the people below me, the people behind me, and the people next to me. Yeah. And like when I'm saying I can hear them, it's like they grab a cup out of their cabinet. You can hear it banging into the other cup. <laughs> It's that bad. Yeah, sometimes I, I get scared that they can hear me through the wall when we're talking, like, and guys slamming their doors all the time. I'm just going to hear a... Yeah. Sorry, no, or or if door. you're doing bedroom fun, you got to turn on the music <laughs> because they're going to hear the rats. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear the rats fucking three blocks down. <laughs> yeah, right <there>. Squeak, squeak. <laughs> yeah. That wall. That wall. Yeah, That's I, crazy. I know they hear me and Jeff talking mm-hmm. because me and him get well, loud I'll be sometimes. loud as fuck. I go, I be going there. They be thinking it's a party all the time. Really? really? Have, you, have you had any complaints? Only the one when everybody was down. Uh, there was people for like, New Year's, right? Not New Year's, but it was like some random night. Everyone it was me, you, like all the boys and everything. Mm-hmm. And I think one somebody was throwing the tennis ball for Frank, and we go over the couch and then just pop on the ground, and you hear Frank. Uh, oh, okay, and okay. I only know that's the noise that she heard because when she came up the next day, she goes. It sounded like a bowling ball and then a rumbling after it. <laughs> and I'm like, and she didn't get mad though because she looked over and saw Frank. So I think she just thought I was playing with Frank. She didn't know everybody was over and we were like going uh, crazy. But see, um, your dog is your scapegoat. Yeah, like, and he's cute, so yeah, nobody's gonna cute, be yeah. mad at him. Can't, can't do that with Bruce. <laughs> what Vicious that? animal. I picked him up, start petting. I'm sorry, Frank. We won't play anymore. I, I know, buddy. <laughs> then she feels exercise. bad. She's like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. We'll have to give you I'll away. neglect you, child. It's all right. <laughs> we'll have to give you away. Look the lady in the eyes. Uh, <laughs> puppy dog eyes. <laughs> oh, Is that good? Bro, Are you happy now? Frank is the cutest guy. Yeah. I would give Frank I got to meet him. Thing. I got to meet Frank him. Frank is so cute. Yeah, he's, he's a cutie. Frankie's so cute. Two years old now, though. He's That's like still crazy. with the puppies. Already too. That's you know, crazy. The first time they got that boy, man. That's different. That's yeah. different. On average, uh, how long do dachshunds live? Because they're smaller. Smaller dogs live pretty long. They can live up to like 16 yeah, years. 16 years. Long. Yeah. Like that. Boy, you got a whole. Well, Skyler's dog lived for 16 years before he died. Yeah. And he was a black lab. So. My, uh, my parents had a rat terrier that lived to be 18, I think, before there you he go. died. They pushing the boundaries too. It's not just us humans. Boy, I had stories about that. The the that little family. They had a lot of dogs. Yeah, because you used dogs. to stay out back here, right? In, in La Belle, no, in La Belle. Muse, kind of like north of La Belle a little bit. That's crazy. That's uh, out there. Yeah. yeah, bro, man, like, bro's booling on the acres. It was like a lot of land out there, man. Damn. We had Ooh, four horses, twelve donkeys. Damn. Tons of dogs, yeah. six acres, not a lot of. Land, you guys sold like, all of it with with the with the donkeys and dogs and horses. Yeah, duh, and the thing is, man, those miniature donkeys are like, they're kind of not expensive, but they're not not. And they were selling them for like fifty bucks a piece to get to get oh, rid wow. of them. Oh wow! People would just come and pay one hundred and fifty bucks, load three donkeys <laughs> up in their trailer, okay. and take off with them. <laughs> That's what's up. The horses, I think, I don't know. They knew somebody that raced horses, so they just gave them to them. Oh okay. Oh, okay. They were cool. Horses were fun. So did you ride them? All? Like, can you ride horses? Um, not like, well, I we didn't like ever ride them or train them or anything. Okay. I would just go and jump on their back and just they'd walk paint. around, and I would just sit on top of them. But Bro. the donkeys though, they were cool. They, I, I'd ride on them. They're, oh, they were super. I had cheap. like little a bit and like a <laughs> thingy for a hop on top of a miniature donkey, but shoot, because I was oh, ninety pounds, cool. dude. I didn't weigh anything. Ah, oh. uh, okay, okay. Not well, even. I don't think I weighed. I don't think I weighed a hundred pounds until my sophomore year, and maybe my end damn. of my freshman year in high school. I'm five of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. My oh my god! I was tiny. Home. I was tiny. Dude. Wow, that's what's up. You got. Trying, so pretty small. trying to trying to get nah, small, you got bro. some weight on you. Dude, he's he's bigger than the than when the first time I met him. First yeah. time I met him, five. Give That's because I got a desk job now. I don't burn any calories. No, nah, give me two there. months. <laughs> it's bulk is season. What you mean? This is you're on your bulk. Like, that's good. You can bulk like, up, and then, like, now you know what to do with it. You know, see, I, I, I really doubt you'll probably get fat in your lifetime. No, you won't. No, I won't let myself. I spend, like, running. And yeah, stuff bro's... To, I take Frank for long bro got walks. Cardio, like, walk a lot. Yeah, so Dude. one question I want to ask you, because I know you've been in your job for a, a year and a half now. Yeah, a little yeah, over. a year and a half. How, so. how are you liking it? Uh, is it, it, is it what you've always wanted? Or, um... Like, uh, 
exciting lackluster like like how do you feel about it like do you see yourself being there for another 5 10 15 years or I'm pretty um, sure he has like short term goals that he's trying to get to Thank you for answering the question, yeah. Caleb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, no, but really, um, so I've been there for probably, I don't know, I started, yeah, a year and a half roughly, and mm-hmm. um, my goal my goal is to become a financial planner. Um, I don't have anybody in my family that comes from finance, really, immediate family. I don't Something know different, that's what's yet. up. But um, I, I never knew how to do that or where to go with that, so I've been uh, talking to a lot of people at Schwab. I would like to stay with Schwab and do financial pl- actually something that I really recently learned about is the, like centralized planning department is what it is mm-hmm. and they have financial planners there who don't necessarily have clients but Schwab has financial consultants and okay. they have the clients and whenever the plan gets a little more intricate or too detailed for them they'll come to the centralized planning department and talk to one of the professionals there and say okay. hey can you help me build a college education plan for this person and you'll go and do all of the Oh, so they have, that. like, human resources for all those little things. So you're not just kind of lost. Kind of, they, not, well, if they have professionals for okay. different things. So okay. a lot of the FCs do financial planning. It's just when it gets into more of the involved stuff that you're going into, like, the financial planning programs and actually, I don't know, uh, taking the, uh, I, I don't know, coming up with different asset mm-hmm. allocations for all the clients or whatever. If it's more in detail than what the it's more it's out of the scope of the financial planners uh knowledge um, then they can go and that's so default cool. to somebody who knows better on it but um a lot of the people in the centralized planning department are all uh cfp professionals so they have their sort or their they have their cfp which would be certified financial planner okay and uh so that is something a credential you can get where you you sit for the exam it's one exam uh you have to have taken the uh, financial planning uh, schooling and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some colleges are certified with the CFP board. And um, after you pass the exam, you have to work in the financial services industry for three years after that before you can start using your marks. Holy shit, that's what's up. And yeah, no, it's really cool though because it's kind of like um, the the gold standard sort of per se, uh, sorry, of the financial planning industry because you are held to a f- fiduciary standard okay so legally you are required to act in the best interest of the client uh-huh. so the clients can ha- have confidence in the fact that if they're going to see a financial advisor who is a cfp professional if they make a decision for uh, if they're educating you on some sort of financial product say life insurance or something mm-hmm. they're only going to tell you about the most relevant things to you and what would be uh, things that would be beneficial for your plan. And okay. They never, uh, prefer, I mean, not to try and like pitch it. I'm not trying to sell anything. You know? <laughs> no, 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 no. But, go ahead. But sell it. Like, sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so for, what, for what it is, what it's think? kind of like the client makes the ultimate decision for what they want to do with their financial plan. It would be my responsibility to educate you on all of your options. So basically, they, you're kind of just uh, trying to create a portfolio for your client to be based so, on what so they So it can be want. specifically tailored to them. Well, they'll get, they'll, they'll take like a, a CIQ, which is a client. Um, um, CIQ. It's like uh, it's it's a risk profile, and mm-hmm. it's like talk to tell like if the market were to crash, go down fifteen percent. Mm-hmm. What is the likelihood that you would sell your stocks? Uh, agree, disagree, or strongly disagree. Oh, so and then based off of that, it generates a score, and that's your risk profile. Mm-hmm. Based off of that, and then from that, they'll uh, create a allocation for you. Say, for me personally, I'm willing to take on tons of risks. So right now. Mm-hmm basically 100 percent of my portfolio is in equities which okay. is more risky but you're going to get more return so i have a longer time horizon and it's okay for me to invest in risky assets mm-hmm. where somebody in retirement they don't want to they want to make sure they're not losing any money because right. they're so they're going to be 60 percent in bonds and 40 percent in stocks that mm-hmm. way their capital is going to be preserved and then they can hold on to it for whenever they take uh, required minimum distributions for retirement, and they have to start pulling money out of that, out of that account. And uh, what are, what are you guys? What are you guys' succession rate? Or do um, you... <clears throat> see, and that's the thing. I don't work there yet. That's not where I'm at. I'm working toward it. Currently, uh, okay, currently, okay. I work just in fixed income. I okay. work with bonds, so, so and yeah. you, you don't know the meat and potatoes until you actually get into. Yeah, no, okay. I just know well, what what kind of what a financial planner does. But what I do on a day to day is 
routine maintenance for accounts, basically for mm -hmm. bond portfolios specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, we I work for a separately managed, they're separately managed account company, oh, and so. Uh, a lot of people have fixed income portfolios as part of their overall portfolio, mm -hmm. and we're an active manager, so we're buying the best municipal bond offerings and think corporate bond offerings, and the, we can kind of assure uh, a specified rate on our different strategies. So we have long-term strategies, short-term strategies, okay. and people will buy whichever one will fit their goal so you're definitely the one that we need to come to when we actually oh, yeah. start <laughs> bringing I in the income yeah, yeah like, I, I told i've been telling them for how many years you're our cpa yeah, he's <laughs> well. just, yeah we're just speaking in pre-final form yep. you know what i'm saying i have foresight this ain't even his final form i see form. the future what the hell? <laughs> he's ascending what right now what the heck absolutely i will only work through my boys yep that's it they got to get there first though man it's a long way of to course get there. hey time yeah and yeah. it's a lot uh, yeah it's like a lot of studying so right now i'm taking all these classes and everything and i'm also working 40 hours a week yeah and we've been we recently hired oh, three months ago now and we hired two people that i've been training mm -hmm. and it's like finally take the burden off of uh, yeah. you a little bit because right. you got a lot on your you, chest you can really expand on what you're trying to do yeah but I, it's really nice though to be uh given the opportunity to be in the position that I'm in because it's like yeah. uh, I came straight out of college and into the pandemic. I got my job in 2021. Yeah. You know, it's not like I, I searched for a year, maybe not even search. I was because I, I graduated in the fall of 2020 mm -hmm. from FGCU. I was working only on the weekends at Publix at the time. I worked from Fuck. December when I graduated, only weekends until February. I told myself I'm not going to take any shifts during the week until I get a new job. That mm -hmm. way I don't get comfortable and then fall back into it right. and so three months later I, I got this job and I don't know it's crazy it's like during during the pandemic I know a lot of people were hurting for work or yeah, they were yeah. having a tough time finding and you're work just and one of the lucky ones one of those opportunities presented it to mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. and I actually switched positions in my firm pretty quickly uh, I've kind of been like just saying yes to everything for like taking on more responsibility mm -hmm. and stuff like that so Cause you gotta learn some shit. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's been it's been an amazing experience. I've really enjoyed the time I spent there, and I enjoyed the time at my old job before. And I was there for six years, so I like being with a company for a while. Yeah, so, you meet a lot of people. Yeah, uh, I I wouldn't be surprised if I ended up doing another six for this one. I mean, given that if I if I don't get separated from the company for something else, not that I would, but you never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think. Um, there are like companies that have hiring freezes going on right now. They're not Damn. hiring anybody yeah. else. Because we're over. Uh, what was it? Because it was weird. Because like I really just watched. It was. Is it because of what's going on right now? Uh, I believe it, 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 some of it plays into it, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I mean, we're kind of going into a recession have, here. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm not like an economist or anything like that, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we're starting to see a lot of that, all that, and inflation is really picking up. Interest rates are going up, and it's. Tough. Well, no, scale, I agree. On, on I the agree. scale of, of finance, where does an economist rank? What are they looking at? Economists are like different altogether, but they're they look at the like, whole thing, right? Like, well, there's macro and micro, right? Oh, right. You right, know, right, but I mean, true. a macro economist is studying the broader economy. They're probably an economist. I think is probably who's producing your CPI numbers and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Okay. I don't know what else, what all they really do, mm -hmm. but. Mm -hmm. I, all I give from them is a bunch of stats and like, hey, this is what's happening and yeah, it, this will lead to, because I, I I can't remember for the life of me. I think it was like Bloomberg Quick Takes or something like mm -hmm. that. It was like a twenty minute you know informational or whatever, and it was just like we had that whole Great Resignation thing. Everyone. Oh, the job where everybody right. uh, everyone was resigning. Well, yeah, everyone was resigning. So. There was and a, starting their own business. There was a need for employees, so now they already sent out those were hiring, and they hired all those people, but now it's costing too much to like retain them because, you know. But again, too, a lot of GDP is going down. Companies aren't making uh, are uh, reporting lower earnings, lower quarterly earnings, and you still have all these people to pay. 
You just gonna lay them all off after you just hired them? Well, again, too, there was a lot of them that aren't even staying because, again, oh, the the, they, they were giving the what, the what? What do you call that? Um, the thousand dollars that they did. Oh, the, the stimulus. The, the stimulus. The They're giving a lot of stimulus. So a lot of people were just receiving the stimulus for a certain period of time or noticing that they were getting paid more from the stimulus being unemployed than they were being employed. It was $600 in Florida. You know what's one of the craziest things that I heard out of the pandemic Mm -hmm. is that with everybody working remotely, there were some people who were able to maintain two full-time jobs remotely. Remotely? (laughs) They're working, getting paid 80 hours a week and they just have like two laptops open and they're at like different things. That... That's insane. That's different. That's like the I feel like you're working more though. I don't know how I they feel do like it. okay, you're 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 at home, right? I, I I'm guessing that's why. Okay, because you're at home and you're working from home. Like you don't have time to do shit in the house. Yeah. Because once you're done with your first job, you, you gotta, gotta start, start your second. Or they overlap. They're at the same time. They're at the same time. Yeah. Do you work two nine to fives or something? That'd be crazy. That's crazy. But then if you're on like a training call with one of them and none of like it's supposed right. to be on a call with the now, other. Now was this more like telemarketing or is this like nitty gritty like we're actually doing? Well, I don't know. Then again, because you do have like freelance programmers mm-hmm. and and stuff like that. So you can get them to do on, the job for you while you right. focus on paying them a minimum. Right on GitHub. And but stuff like, like that. I, the perfect example I always use for my brother is uh, about five years ago they put up the Gardner Building. Now there's nobody in it. So yeah. now it just sits it's there. So it's a waste of space. If for you ever no pass reason. by, the, it's empty. Yeah, it's across. It's, it's at empty. the skywalk. And they Publix. put up the building because everyone ended up working remotely, mm-hmm. and then they just laid people off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So now you don't have enough money to pay off the building, and your company is working remotely. I don't know how big Gartner is. I don't know how far they go and yeah, how they're, they're managing either. their whatever. But like, it's just stuff like that now. What do you do with the building? Same thing with Com- Comcast Xfinity. There's nobody in that building anymore. No. Everybody's really? working remotely. Yeah, if you go to, what is it? Not All these job search sites. Well, Indeed, perfect example. LinkedIn, Hold your thought. Perfect example. When I called CenturyLink uh, to get the name switched on the account, literally this this guy's talking to me on the phone and you hear his kids on the background. In the background, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, yeah. Yeah. He was a technician, yeah. a, a chat technician. At home. At home. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they don't need them anymore. You see what I'm saying? The only thing that you'll probably still really need is a field technician. Yep. But, like, why do you need to spend millions of dollars on a brick-and-mortar building? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Well, I worked, they just started having people come back into the office more. Now it's, like, three days a week in the office and two okay. days a week from home. That's good, though, because you're still keeping the, like, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's better than full work from home. Yeah. I think that's better than full work from home. Because you could still have that interaction and that work-life balance where it's like you know what's happening in the office. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, maybe there are just some things you can only do in the office. Yeah. Well, it's it's like, dude, it's uh, you wouldn't realize it until you sit in the office with nobody. When I first got hired on, it was only the new hires in the office. So there was five of us. Holy shit. So there was, and then there was also, there's two people training us and our directors. There was eight people total in the office that usually holds i think 70 or 80 people Mm -hmm. and now we're starting to get more people back in the office and like it was quiet we'd be just being stupid and yelling and running <laughs> yeah. down the hall and everything. But now Buck there's like naked. actual people in there. Yeah, well, yeah, like, and so, I don't know. Now you get more random conversations, though. Right. I feel okay. like I'm less productive. More people come and, like, distract me. Uh, oh, okay. You were able to focus more on what you needed to so do. So you started when people were starting to work from home. Right? Everyone was home. So uh, it took me a year to meet my manager, anyone on my team to meet. That's well, what I, was say. I think eight months we had an event and I met them in person. But yeah. then uh, it was a full year before I worked with anybody from my team in mm. person. That's wild. Yeah, and that we worked fine. Right. Training worked out. Everything was fine. No complaints on it. But it was like, was crazy. it like a different interaction? Like, did you did it feel weird for you? Um, I don't know. Because like, y'all who did Zoom me, calls, right? Yeah, but the lady who trained me, um, she did. She doesn't. She left the company to go work somewhere else, mm-hmm. and I didn't get to meet her in person Aww. until she came to turn in her monitors and all of her work from Dang. home stuff. Oh wow! That's but crazy. her and I were like really close. Right. You know, we talk every day on Teams, and like we'd be on calls for however three four hours a day mm-hmm. going over stuff. So we wow. and her like got to know each other. We had a lot in common, but, but you never, never physically. It felt weird, but it also kind of reminds me of like a lot of kids nowadays. They're playing video games and they don't actually. They make friends and connections. All Online over. friends. Well, yeah. Oh, freaking Lo-Fi girl. Uh, we were on the channel when you just uh, on YouTube where you just play Lo-Fi. There's a live chat and people are like 
adding friends. <laughs> add me, add me. Add it's me. like, oh, internet I followed friends. y'all. I'm like, wow. It's real know, life. Man. Yeah, it's kind of weird to me that you can, like, but it, I've seen it now in business where you meet people and you never actually you never meet, them. Actually yeah. meet them. Yeah. That's true. The, do you ever think so, like, the way the nature of work, because I feel like we're going through a transitional period of how we're defining the way we do work. Not what is work, but how we define the way we do work. Do you have any concerns on like how work is going to change like whether you're at home whether you're in the office or like whether your job role changes like depending on what technology is available out there like how do you how do you stay ahead of that like how do you keep out for that like what not getting replaced by robots yeah uh i got a a a degree in finance i mean i don't really know if i feel like finance is kind of always going to be yeah, around. that's true. I, it, it might be able that's to true. replace me with the robot, and I'm not to calculate too the numbers or crunch that. numbers faster. But they have like investment robots and stuff. It's more of like, at some point, you're not even necessarily a financial advisor. It's right. more of like somebody that's there to talk you down and add the that human, human aspect. Yeah, yeah. I got. You. I think what he's saying is because you know how you 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 pick up a phone and the first thing that answers is a machine. Right. And a lot of people are like, I don't want to talk to the machine. I want to talk to a person. Oh, right. Because the person can actually, it's not going to give you uh, pre-entered um, questions. This person can actually give you complex answers. There's still, well, even in, like in like recessionary times when the stock market drops, you're freaking out. You want to sell all of your stuff. But it's like, if I'm a, I'm a person too. I'm experiencing this as well. This, yeah, uh, right. So I can There's tell you empathy. like, hey, I get what you're saying. I understand, you know, but it's going to be fine. you are still got another 10 years till right. you retire. You're going to get all of that back. Yeah. That's fine. And so I don't think a machine would be able to do that no, as. Not at all. Uh, not yeah. As I, I, I feel like no, I don't care how advanced they get. Like there's just something that's off about a machine. Like but when soulless. You know, when I was a bagger, though, and I thought, man, they might replace me. You know what? I studied and I got brought myself to a position where it's like, I think here I can have a career for the next 40 yeah, years. Yeah. So it's just finding where you can and where you can't. And it's tough because some people, I don't know, live day to day. Yeah. Kind of don't really plan for the future. That's so right. if you live day to day, eventually day to day is going to catch up to you. And then yeah. once you're there, you're like, oh, crap. I didn't so do you have a contingency? Be- contingency plan just in case that happens in case that in case that happens yeah. um well if i stay cute and keep working out i could probably sell my body <laughs> <laughs> Bro. I mean, there's a market for everything oh, it man. just depends yeah that's oh. true i'll be like, on, i'll fin- be on there with you finance doesn't just bleed into robotics yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying it's just like i just want to know like what's your thought process in 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 all that because it's like real life happens you know whether you pay attention or not and shit like that. And I just, I just, go ahead, go ahead. I just thought of my answer to your, to your question. What is my retirement plan? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd like to start playing like songs on the beach at like a bar on the beach. Play for Actually the, the ukulele? Yeah, for tips. How oh, cool would that be? That'd be that fire. would be, that would be. Kind of yeah. like Homeboy from uh, Brianna's graduation party with the steel drums. Kind of, yeah, oh, but not the steel drums though. I don't know if I would play that. Oh, let me get on the steel drums. But I mean, it'd be really cool to just like be... 65, 70 years old, just sitting at No, nah, we don't have to practice that, man. Margaritaville yeah. or something playing. Oh, ah, Margaritaville. Mm, that'd be cool. That'd be fun. That's my retirement plan. So. That's cool. That was That's just so bringing cool. it back to the, the question. Are we staying uh, Florida coast? Any other Florida coast? I don't know. It depends on where I end up. The The thing is, actually, uh, the, the centralized planning department for Schwab, a lot of their offices, they don't have an office in uh, Florida, but they have some in indianapolis chicago denver but uh, then again like you said everything is turning to to be remote so yeah they they are remote but i think um they do they like having people in the office some some they want you to be close so So, and you can do 90 days a week work for a remote or 90 days a year remote i think is what it was so you could take a month off and work Mm -hmm. remotely from a different state if you wanted to they won't let you go out of the country but you could it's got flexibility i don't know i only i've been thinking a lot lately that it, it relocating now would be really beneficial for me because my parents are relatively young mm-hmm. okay and that and way you're if, just getting start like you're yeah. just planting your roots yeah, yeah and that way if any right. if anything were to come in the future when they're a little bit older i could always you know pr- potentially be more experienced so working from home wouldn't That's make nice. that much of a difference and then i'd also be able to be there so where are you them. looking where are you looking at no clue man i have no clue, no clue. i would like to go somewhere same do you want a house yeah 
But if I'm not a boxable, not right now though. <laughs> you gonna keep talking shit about that boxer? You are gonna be the first one ringing my doorbell? <laughs> hey, let me sit on your couch, Jeff. Okay. You're gonna, gonna be right it. there next to the laundry. He's gonna get. It's gonna be a cardboard box. <laughs> SpongeBob, imagine they. They're gonna have taken a razor blade and cut out the door. <laughs> Bitch, let me in. <laughs> a little pine cone glued oh, to the front. Oh man. my god. Yo, yeah, I'm telling you, man. Uh, but they're so cool. Man. You can stack as many as you want and have as big of a. He's house the as spokesperson you want. for boxables. Is he talking about Legos? <laughs> you stack them, oh, make them any you shape you want. Any shape you want. It's like Minecraft, but in real life, with a box. Yeah. With a boxable. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. I think that's, it's really innovative. We just got to change the way we, we do housing. But then you got to find a place to put it. You've got to Well, that's easy. You lane. just buy a lot. Yeah, just buy a plot. then you got to get water and electricity that's, run to it. That's half the cost, dude, of an entire house. That's literally half the, of an entire house. I just need to buy a plot. Uh, the, the, the casita starts at 50K, 49999999, 50K. I told you he's a spokesperson yeah, I was for Boxer Boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's ready. Buy me a plot of land. He's ready. He like, okay. There's infinite. I think he's trying to get. I think he's trying to get sponsored by by oh, uh, the Boxable company. We'll free Boxable. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll put hashtag Boxable on there so they can <laughs> <laughs> so it can link it to their website. A free, hey, Boxable, if you're listening, send me a free box. No, I'm not sure. Yeah, That'd like dump it right next. I'll just to put it in your backyard. And yeah, that's true. It will fit my backyard. He'll just come in here just to take a shower uh, <laughs> no it'll have a shower it has everything yeah but they have to hook you up yeah you're gonna let them just so, hook up to your stuff so it's, yeah, right yeah. There. he's yeah, gonna just... be paying for all the electric bill and water bill the whole time why does it say why is my fpl bill one million dollars what the hell no i'll have solar i'll do solar oh man and then i'll just tax credit every i will get so it will all be credited you don't understand Oh, I understand. There's a twenty thousand dollar credit for a boxable because it's uh, uh it's a high efficiency eco blah blah blah. Tell me, man, spokesperson. Bro, you'll get fifteen yep, k yep. for solar panels. Did he apply there recently or something? Probably they to, they denied him, <laughs> so now he's just being a spokesperson, Bro, so he can get heck? free. All of that on his own. I'm telling you, <laughs> they're not gonna hire me. I'm just gonna sell like, this on my own. He's like, <laughs> fuck you guys. I'm inventing my own boxable. <laughs> No, for real, man. Like, you just got to think about, like, I plan, like, I plan the state of life that I want, and then I just move in order to get to that spot. And then once I get to that spot, then I'll plan ahead. Granted, not everything works out, but, you know, I still know what I'm trying to get, and that's that fucking box. It's my damn box. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, man, like, how do you, like, what's the... What's your view on uh, uh, the the housing market? Uh, like box, how, how, boxables, <laughs> not the damn box. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm gonna make all y'all jealous. Uh, like, how do you? What, what's your outlook on? Well, because for me, you? my house was went up. I bought it for two twelve nine hundred, um, and it went all the way up to three seventy. Now it's yeah. down three forty five. So you, it's already going down. So maybe you're. So well, you're, it's leveling out. It's, lev- it's leveling out, so your generation can uh, afford it. Cause, yeah. Because you said too. something. I don't know if it was you said. Everybody looks alike. No, yeah, but yeah. it was just like the dang white guys. Oh, Jesus, you, uh, racist, you, yeah. you essentially have to have like the only way. <laughs> what the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The go ahead, go way. ahead, continue, continue. The only way. <laughs> the only, the only, like you have to. Uh, the only way you can fix whatever is going on here, this market crisis, uh, uh, is to intentionally crash the market, or it has to crash itself. Yeah. For it to correct, like they're like, because you said you don't want to rent for the rest of like, your cause life. Like, because no one yeah. wants to lose value on their home, but people yeah. want to afford homes. I mean, but that's but, just extra I mean, money that they exist. What's the best time to buy a house, right? right. Never. When you want to buy a house. Yeah. There's no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's never yeah. a good time, but it, yeah, yeah he's right true. too. When you want to buy. You a know, house. there's no like no. So no whatever time the, market, in the market, you'll it's just more of when you want a house. It depends on when you want it though, because I'm obviously if like. Interest rates go up like how they are, whatever they are. I don't know what the uh, the home mortgage or the thirty year treasury interest rate is right now, but I'd imagine it's a little bit higher than it used to be. And especially in the when the stock market was at like record highs and stuff, you saw record low interest rates and everything. Mm-hmm. People were getting yep. like two percent mortgages on their houses and stuff like that. And that's really good. That's a good time to yeah, buy a house, man. Yeah. But right now, I just don't think it is, and I'm probably gonna have to like, wait. I what don't have happens to buy a house though? Right now. Yeah, but what happens though? Like, what do you mean? 
And in terms of the population that has to deal with that shit. They have to Doesn't do that. that in turn... Like, everything's a domino, right? If everything's a domino and every... If people can't afford houses now, like, that's a... a, a I don't want to say a generation. But that's a good chunk of people who are going to be, quote-unquote, homeless or renting for life. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, like, that doesn't... That's not good for any outlook of anything. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, we could talk about solutions, but, like, what happens to these people? Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I don't know if necessarily renting is a bad thing. Not everybody needs to own something. I feel like, uh, I don't know about other countries, but I feel like renting's not too bad. You look at big cities. Most people, I feel like, probably rent there, too. They own the apartments that they live in and everything. Most of those are apartment buildings. That's crazy. There's suburbs, I guess, on the outside where they own houses, but I don't know. But it's crazy the prices that they pay every single month for the rest of their lives. Jiffy's one bedroom was, like... Almost DJ? No, no, no. Jeffy, when she was at Columbia and she was living in. Well, the shoes that's in the heart of New York City. Manhattan. Though. How yeah. much? A lot. A room was like almost three grand. And she was, what was it? Um, and what what was that building from like the eighteen hundreds? And the elevator didn't work, <laughs> and she had to walk up a couple flights of stairs. And it's like all these buildings are fucking old. Yet you're making people pay two to three thousand dollars. Convenient. And I get it. It's 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 in the city, but Jesus Christ, man! I well, that's the problem with older cities like that, man. It's still it's such a nice city, but it's like it's so old, and all the roads I feel like are probably getting pretty run down. They've right. lived some weather bad. through those things. Yep. yep. They're bad. But it's like and they're constantly do you fixing just it. Abandon the city, or do you invest? Billions That's of dollars. That's infrastructure, yeah. and then it's like you got to pay more in taxes. More and taxes. Like, New York has such high state taxes already. People are moving out of there because they don't yeah. want to be there anymore. You see what I'm saying? There is no like, no one wants to be the guy, to be like, hey guys, we gotta hit the reset button. Well, wasn't Detroit like that when they had all the? It was like the motor capital of the country. Motor capital, you know? bro. You saw all these suburban paradises. Now they're just run down ghettos. And That's it's just crazy. like and it's crazy, dude. Because it costs too much to, to maintain to maintain because the people don't want their taxes raised. And that's what most politicians are running on. It's like we're not gonna raise your taxes. But your city's not gonna get fixed. Your like I said, it's like fixed. uh you can't have your cake and eat it too. You it's a it's a it's a give and take. But just like with the education system. Fixed. If you yeah. want a better ed- a better education system, then we're gonna have to raise your taxes if you want your kids to have a better education. Yeah. But they don't want their taxes raised. It's like which one do you want? Like you want a better quality of life, you're gonna have to pay for it. Yep. But you like that and that's what it, it's contradictory where it's like, Well, we don't want the government to do XYZ but we want the government to do X, Y, Z for free. No. Without work. paying our taxes. It doesn't work like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like unless, and, and I, I, I feel like this is where we're going, where it's like private corporations are just buying swaths of land. Bill Gates bought 800 acres of nothing. <laughs> of nothing. Elon Musk is building a, a, a city in a, Texas. A, a city in Texas. Just yeah. Starbase. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. All, all the cars are electric. All the yeah. buildings are solar. Everything. It's it's yes. its own town. Starbase. Everything is yeah. the, everything is self sufficient. Everything is robots. When is this supposed to be a uh, launch? When, when is it well, really it's already in progress. People like it, it originally started where it's like most of his. It's in usually Texas, like yeah. employees of you know SpaceX and his his partner companies, Starbase, Texas. What do you think it'd be like if we had like three or four Elon Musks? Oh, we'd be going far. Oh, man. We'd be going far. You I think? feel like we kind of already have that. Jeff Bezos. He controls everything you buy. Yeah, I don't feel like he's as uh, vocal. And he's not vo- as vocal as... Not no, as he really... He's oh, not. you mean in that? Okay. Where he has the funds and the voice. Because everything is per- to, personal right. for him. Like, yeah, I mean that every, billionaire personality. Right. Yeah, yeah he li- <laughs> and, and every expense that he puts money out into is for him. Like the spaceship where he went up himself or anything like that where... Um, Elon Musk started... Is doing it for the people? For the people. Because Starlink, look what is happened. Is he really he's doing li- it for the people? Okay. Here's where I'm half. Oh, you're going into conspiracy theory, but I'm talking about surface level. Surface level. Surface level. Okay. He's 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 uh, do, like we're gonna switch to Starlink next year because it's gonna be available for me. Global. Be- because internet. it's gonna be God Internet because I don't because I have nine mega. 
<laughs> megabits per second out here. But with his, it'll be 50 to 500 mm. for 110 bucks a month. So it ranges from 50 to 500, though. That's a and, big range. Are you always getting 500 or are you always it's getting unlimited. 50? Well, it's better than. Oh, the right. Well, 50 is better than dying megabits. No, it's yeah. <laughs> you know, I've never like, had 50. In every universe, 50 is me- way better. better. Than, yeah. Because, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. like, it's going to take cost five grand for Xfinity to come, and they're not going to lay cable in CenturyLink competition. You know what I'm saying? CenturyLink strong. So they said, I like would this. have to pay five grand to lay cable under the canals in order to give this area internet, but I'm paying for it. They're not going to give me an incentive, so. Um, people pay for it if they yeah. want Xfinity. I have to pay for it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. get the fuck out of here. I, I have uh, Xfinity at my place. Yeah. That's what I had to get. Bro, and how many? And how six, many? Almost 600, probably. Yeah. But that's, Usually it's over 600. It but I pay for 600. This man can make a motion picture. But what's uh, how many gigs you get a month? Or is, it a, is there a cap? A data that, cap? No, I don't think I don't think so. It's um, maybe data. no, no, it might be cap. Because for us, uh, for me, it's one terabyte. But they're like, you're never gonna. Yeah, hit it might have been like one terabyte or then something. It was like a, it was a dumb number where it was like. <laughs> <laughs> they, they well, because what Century told me was, um, you get one terabyte of da- of of data, and there's no way you should ever be able to reach that. If you hit 700, then there's something wrong. Like he, he said, even with ten people at your you house, you get robbed. So all, stealing your internet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Someone's stealing you change your password. Because he said, even with with uh, all the devices connected, with ten people living in one house, you should never reach seven hundred um, gigs in a month because yeah. it renews every single month. So. Yeah. But uh, uh, essentially, like I said, service level. Uh, Jeff Bezos is not in it with the people like right. like um, right. Elon Musk is with uh, his Starlink and everything else that he's doing. So you think he's gonna end up buying Twitter? Now, I know they're going to he's court. He's back out of it now, isn't he? Well, it's too late. Uh, he's, they're going to court. He this will be the high, most fake. televised, I promise you right now, it will be the most televised. Why is he trying to back out? The fake accounts and stuff. Fake like account, that. bot accounts. So, they're, wow. what's yeah, it called? He said they didn't, like, fully reveal the number. And then they rebuttaled with, oh, due diligence. He it's didn't, your, he didn't, he didn't do, do due diligence. But, but they he, gave him, like, some percentage. They something. gave him Did some they? percent, but here's the catch. Now they're going to take him to court. Twitter will have to reveal everything. Yeah. So if they were lying, it was a deal made in bad faith. Ah, uh, so he yeah. went. Or now that Twitter stock shares have tumbled, they'll have to restructure the deal. He'll pay less. <laughs> <laughs> and then he can make it whatever he wants. Do you see what I'm saying? He can shape like, it in his own who's image. Who's doing that? Like, come on, who's doing that? Who is? I don't doing think that? he did that on purpose, though. That's a lucky accident, De- bro. That's a if lot it all of works luck. Out like that, that's too. a lot. And yeah. then saying it all works out like that. What happens if Twitter wasn't like too far off with their number? You know. That's true, but can he still restructure it where he pays current share price? You think so? I have no clue. Damn, that'll be crazy. That's something to watch. I'll, I'll, cause it's like, this is what we expected. Corporation eating the rich, eating the rich. Yeah, the rich eating yeah, the rich. True. Isn't that what's gonna happen? You know what I'm saying? You're gonna like in in the consolidation of wealth, the rich are gonna eat the rich. And it, it reminds me of that. What was it? Love death robots. Love death robots. Yep. When the world ended, all the billionaires went to space, but. Like eighty percent of the world were millionaires. You see what I'm saying? Only the point zero one percent. Only the point zero zero one percent went to space. But it's like I, I forgot the point we were talking about. But he hey, does that sometimes. that's life. Rich people eating rich people is what I got out of that. Yeah, yeah. that's what I got too. Um, I forgot where. What, what, well, we were talking about the star, uh, how Elon Musk um, is more involved with uh, people than um, Jeff right. Bezos. Right, right, right. And he's even starting the star base and letting people move into it. Oh, where, this where it's going to be autonomous. Yeah, privatization of cities. Yes. There we go. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, like one loose example, loosely based example I can give you is just like college towns. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Just oh, what do you mean? Like where a lot of the school infrastructure, the roads, their streets that are for the, you know, are either donated to them, they're maintained by private donors and. Mm-hmm. You know, tuition and stuff like that. That's how they. Everything is starting to become private. That's private what I'm economics. saying. Like, yeah. it, hi, we're entering an age of hyper capitalism. Well, like, like the, um, what was that video we were watching on YouTube about the? Because the government, the government taking care of you, or not even, or 
uh, incentivizing like growth in the economy, that's out the window. People, a lot, most. I'm not gonna say all. Most people want the government help, but then the um, then they don't want it because they dip their hands into everything. So it's like, like he was saying, a lot of people have to start um, getting private donors into doing certain things. Like, what was that uh, YouTube video we were watching when? They're trying to create an un, a, a sustainable amount of energy. What's it called? Oh, the um, nuclear fusion. Nu- yeah. Nuclear fusion. It's all privately funded. Everybody around the right. world. That's doing you have it. The, the the global program mm-hmm. Eater, which is in France, literally building a colossal size nuclear fusion reactor inside a mountain, and wow. their timeline. I know. Their timeline 2025? was 2035. 2035. Okay. 2035 for it to come online and them doing tests. And then, well, they released the plans and the blueprints and, and the idea and the concepts. And a lot of these private corporations who are own billions of dollars uh, uh, themselves were like, well, we'll just scale it down and get the technology right. And then we'll privately sell it. The first one to do it runs the world. And they'll eat the rest of the companies they'll up. They'll eat the rest of the companies. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll you see what I'm saying? Combine so it's like company, yeah. the government's going to fail you every time because there's so much bureaucracy. Yeah. And... You need they have their pers- own agenda. Right. It, well, not even just their own agenda. It's just like there's bureaucracy, and you need to pay every single person down that line, whether uh, uh, r- rather than it being all in one company. It's the whole Amazon effect. Hmm. It's the, the Amazon.com effect, where it's like, here are all these services in one place. Mm. Yep. You yep, know what I'm saying? That's true. And the government can't do anything. Well, I think in like other countries, they have super apps mm-hmm. where it's like, you go into one app. It's uh, I guess kind of like how Uber. You go into uh, Uber and you have Uber Eats and you have Uber Rideshare. Yeah. And, and things like that. So it's kind of yeah, interesting dude. how more companies are getting involved with all kinds of different yeah. things. Yeah. And 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 that's what ends up happening. It's like, look at uh uh, uh what you gonna call it? Uh, what's the name of that? Ca- Alphabet. Mm, Google. Oh yeah, it's Alphabet. Yeah. What? Isn't it um like uh, uh what was it uh. Cable streaming services are finally starting to lose like the rights to a lot of the sports. A lot yep. Of the sp- yep. Programs you will too. Own nothing. And you will, and be, you happy. will be happy. The streaming is starting to finally get into the sports. Yeah. Right. Everything as a service. It was like the other day. I just got my mom some blink cameras, and he told me after they got. They it, didn't know. I didn't know. If They're you have like, if you have the old blink cameras, you don't pay monthly to store the data, because my buddy Skyler has the old blink cameras. But the ones that I have. You have to pay ten sixty five a month for as many cameras as you carry, or you just pay three ninety nine for one camera. What's a Blink camera? Um, so it's like by Amazon. You know how Amazon how Amazon owns, bought Blink. Bought Blink. Yes. Oh, so Blink a camera. So it's a security but, system. Thing. Oh, right. Like Ring. Like Ring. Like Ring. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing. Same company. Well, different companies, but just Amazon. Amazon owns them. They all have Alexa built in. Yep. They all have your refrigerators. Just know Amazon is their parent company. You know what I'm saying? But, like, at that point, I'm thinking, oh, you know, you can get away from paying a security company like ADT or something like that to charge you whatever a month for a secure home service or security system. So you go and buy these Blink cameras, and it started off free. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for four months I had it for free when I... You start... Barely it's, moved into my house, yeah. it was free for the four months. Yeah, the old the old brand, you know, it started off free. And it's like, well, now you get free security system. You you just pay one time, you're you're protected for life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now it's like, well, now we're, everything's moving to the cloud. We can't have these huge buildings with storage units and, and blah, 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 and whatever. Yeah. So everything's cloud service. Everything, that's why AWS is such a big thing now. You see what I'm saying? That's why, uh, what's the other one? Google Fi or Google Fiber is such a big mm, thing. Because yeah. it's like, the government can't provide you with these advancements. The government can't provide you with these public services. Mm-hmm. So it's all been dumped on to private, uh, the private sector. Why do you think uh, um, you look at Elon Musk? Let's just keep using him. Elon Musk with SpaceX or Tesla. It's like if the government decided to do this, We'd have to hire so many departments, open up so many departments, hire these experts, pay them each. They'd have to communicate with each other, blah, blah, blah. Or we just give you a grant. Yeah. A $1 billion grant. Build us some tech. Take us to space. You see what I'm saying? Give back to society. As long as you follow these rules, we'll keep 
giving you money instead of uh, stretching our tax dollars thin and trying to spread it uh, uh, across you know different job sectors or different government sectors in 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 the country and then now you have a shitty project mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying that's why we ended the space program in 2009 it just cost too much yeah cuz you know what i'm saying you, you you get it so like with spacex it's like well this is all privately owned these are all my workers all my engineers all my blah 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 we don't have to go through 80 million different departments get this approved is this within the the federal budget is this within the federal budget are the people going to vote on this does this need to go to the floor mm-hmm. no here's 1.6 billion dollars build me a rocket yep but uh i was i was talking to somebody and they were saying how like we won't ever go to uh mars or to the moon or whatever until it becomes something that the government wants to do mm-hmm. it's like if it's something that it's more of like the private sector and they're trying to go up there just to do whatever and dick around it's like eh but then once the government it becomes a reason for them to get involved like Russia's trying yeah. to do it first and they yeah. want to go and do it then <laughs> it'll start getting a bunch of funding we'll, we'll at, actually get there look at China why do you think we have Space Force because here's the thing here's the off thing because uh, what was it when did the uh, international ISS program 1994 ISS program start all the countries included in that ESO European Canada and North America NASA and all that they barred China from being part of the the international space, the ISS program. So they started doing their own thing. So they did their own thing. Mm. So now you literally created your arch nemesis. Yep. When well, yeah. you could have collaborated, because China has this idea, this belief where it's like every advancement they make, any the technology they make, information is for the progress of humanity as a whole. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Not just for their it's country. It's not to be, you know, held and privatized, which is why they don't have copyright laws or trademark laws. You can't copyright. You can't, you can't yeah. copy something that was invented by humans. We are all humans. This is free information. Mm-hmm. Information should be free. Mm-hmm. And so, in turn, like, they've been barred from global space agencies. Even Russia's involved. Our cosmonauts are involved with our space agencies. Yeah. Except for them. It's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Now they built their own space station. Am I saying that right? I can't hear my T's. Yeah. Space station? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't um, freak out. Yeah, I can't hear my T's if you didn't know that. I can't hear the 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 pronunciation of the letter T. Yeah. Why? I don't know. It's like it's like some auditory something. Like I can't hear my T's, so I all right. I'm off that. So <laughs> but uh so like now they're seeing China's actually catching up. You know what I'm saying in their advancements in space technology, and China uh, 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 put out this whole space bill or something a while back that it's illegal to claim uh, 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 ownership on oh. extraterrestrial mm. objects, but we didn't agree with that. <laughs> nice. We never signed up for that because we know we're going to be fighting for resources. Yeah. So, that's you know how every race is. So now China owns like a, a portion of the South Pole of the moon. We own a portion in the dark side of the moon. And we can't cross paths. We can't. <laughs> War. Do you see how Space that, Rangers. You, you saw, that, why do you think. Uh, we, wasn't there Transformers are up there? Isn't that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> the dark cube, side of the moon. The yep. cube on the moon. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was a cube on the moon. The cube you know what I'm the talking moon. about. They that said, anymore. no, it's just a strange, perfect cube. There's no atmosphere on the moon, there's no tectonic plates on the moon. Nothing's happening. Ain't no weather on the moon. So you're telling me you're going to see a perfectly cubical rock formation on the moon. Maybe. It's possible. Maybe. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I find a lot of square rocks out in nature. But, like, in nature. Like, nature is doing shit to make those rocks. You see what I'm saying? Not the moon. Not the moon. Do you see mountains on the moon? No, you only see craters. So why is there a random rock with four, no, eight sides... It was a pony glyph. It's a fucking <laughs> <laughs> Where Luffy at? Yo, give me Robin. Give me Robin, bro. Bud. But yeah, it's just like shit like that. We work in our own interests. Like there's no foresight in any of this. Like, I don't know, man. You teach people if civics is a course, you know, like why aren't we looking ahead? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's just shit like that. Shit random thoughts that bug me throughout the day mm-hmm. when it comes to shit like that 
it's like the answer is there, but we don't want to work for it. We don't want to. We don't want the inconvenience of having to jump over that canyon or whatever to get to that or restructuring. To get to what the square rock? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. My thoughts are everywhere. But uh, to get no, to I'm like just no, I feel I feel. But like just to get to uh, like. The economy that we yeah. want, yeah. that works for yeah. us. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, it, it's just tough because everybody's got their own idea of the way things should be. Mm-hmm. And everybody's mm-hmm. got different goals in mind. Mm-hmm. So that makes it hard. But it's like for someone to win, does everyone have to lose? What if we all lose? If we all lose, then we all win, right? We're all losing right now. Yeah, we are. Yeah, that's true. We're taking and it hurts. Else. It hurts. Yeah. Like a motherfucker. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't. We're all taking L's. But it's like no one wants the inconvenient of like, hey, here's the hard pill to swallow. Like there's this idea that we can still salvage whatever's going on right now. Well, I don't know. I think we're doing okay. It'd just be a different world when we come out. But I mean, really, we're already kind of out of it. And I was talking to Brandon about that. It's like sometimes I forget what it was like before the pandemic. I don't even think yeah. about it or really even consider it, honestly. Yeah. yeah. It felt like we just hit a reset button. Like time started in 2020 yeah you see what i'm saying like nothing like i could have memories of my childhood and shit that we did but like it's just a different atmosphere no matter where you go the energy is different the energy is just different (laughs) yeah i don't Mm -hmm. know if you're a person who reads energies but like just it's just different like i found out that i'm just more reclusive now i only Mm -hmm. like hanging out with the people that i know you know what i'm saying and stuff like that like and it's not like to be an asshole or anything like that. Yeah. No, no, no. It's just like, even with movies, like when we went to the movies, it was a thing. Like, yeah. theaters were packed. Or even restaurants you go out, it's really not. Yeah. yeah. There. there was like an ambiance of just, like liveliness and shit. And like everything's just. Now everyone's cautious. Everyone, now everyone's. Ev- everyone's that's weary. It's an air of caution. Yeah. Or they realize you can just pick up your food and take it home. <laughs> no yeah. one, nobody's yeah. really eating in restaurants anymore. You yeah. got a lot of busy drive throughs I see all the time. But it's like, do we yeah. want to? Do we want to get into this idea of the only place we feel comfortable is at home? Home, and I think that's the goal, which you is why they're spreading that? this whole new monkey box thing. Like, oh, you think they're trying to keep people at home? Yeah. Shit, yeah. They kept us home for a year. Yeah, yeah. It was until, that easy until people got tired of it. It was yeah. that easy, and then pe- double of course, masking. Yeah, and all that some stuff people like that. went yeah. out and people protested and stuff. You know, let me not just say it so casually. Like people really did protest though, but uh, like ninety percent, eighty percent of that people were home. Yeah, people were home. Like it doesn't matter how. I'm not looking at the process of you. It's did you do it? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It got done. Here's what I, I would tell you. Like, no matter what happens, uh, uh, the, let me say, like, the government wants you to do something, you're going to do it. They're not going to outright make you do it. They will incentivize yeah. other institutions to make you do it. Yeah. That's well, it's they not, do. yeah, they don't, they don't punish you for bad behavior, but they will re- reward you for good behavior. For good yeah. Behavior, for staying in line. And that's why you think most corporations jump on, on the boat as soon as they hear Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was like back in the day with privacy rights. You know what I'm saying? Like now, you before you get in, read the end user agreement to anything. Mm-hmm. There will usually be a section that says your rights to your data are limited, Powers. are limited to, uh, or I don't want to say this wrong, are limited to search and seizures or warrants. You see yeah, what I'm saying? So if it's like, if, you see what I'm if saying? it comes down to a court of law, there are the companies required by law the to release companies, your data. Exactly. Or release your messages. Exactly. Yeah. But a lot of people literally just scroll through it. Just say, I agree. I want to use the software. Like when we were signing up for um, the programs that we released our um, podcast on, we actually read everything. Yeah. The, the terms and conditions. The terms and conditions. And we found out a couple of them are saying... We, ha- if you do not play our commercials or yeah, or any you of that. you're bound to this temporary contract that renews, and you have to play their ads. They take a portion of your 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 what you make what you if made. you start making right. something. And if they request an idea or pitch an idea, like let's say we blow up and we get super big and crazy, like they now own our audio. Yeah. 
DC mm -hmm. And if we don't, and if we don't abide by their laws, they kick us off their platform and keep and whatever they keep, we keep our content. Yeah. Woo! You know oh what yeah, saying? we made sure we read you know because that's a lot why... of people will scroll down, agree, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like like talking because you know, like you're skeptic, you yeah. know, you question shit, and some people just end up being the end user. Mm -hmm. Like I, I use that phrase like loosely, but like we're headed to an age where like everyone's just going to be an end user because they don't know enough about what's happening besides the service that they're using mm -hmm. well a lot of the times they make it so easy man yeah you don't have to know anything about it you especially like know. phones man you don't have to know crap about an iphone yeah. you turn the thing on you can literally do everything do on there everything yeah. on yep. it, you know what i'm saying and but like it's the user-friendly niceness about those kind of good goodness about well, know. let's see what uh, Elon Musk does with Starlink because he's releasing his own phone. Right. It's a yeah. satellite but, phone company. Yeah, that's true. Well, he, but that's true. But that that could also benefit with like space and internet. Right? Like I but, hate, but but <laughs> that's what it is. Like you could be in the desert and still have signal. That'd be cool. So like, when can we talk about space commerce without it sounding crazy? Crazy. Like not he, for a while. The future. Like for Buzz a while. Year. Well, <laughs> look at it now. SpaceX literally launches 16 rockets a week. That's a lot of rockets. That's a lot of For the satellites, rockets. yeah. 16 rockets a week, dude. Yeah, that's that great. That would have been an eight-month, $6 billion project. No. For NASA to send, like, One three rocket. tons of supplies to space. Yeah. 16 a week, and it's, like, $600. Yeah. That's not bad. And that's just for the fuel. <laughs> that's crazy. That's you see literally what I'm just for so the fuel. So it's like... When I say space commerce, a lot of people tend to lean towards, you know, like futuristic movies. Mm -hmm. No, space com like robots are going to be in space before we are. Yeah. Robots are there to just prep space for us. You see what I'm saying? Oh, we're going to Mars? Let's send a fuck ton of robots. That's literally what we've been doing since 1990. Yeah. Sending robots to understand in its entirety how Mars affects anything. You see what I'm saying? We're doing tests in space. How does space affect biology? Yeah. You know? Growing plants out there. Growing in plants the space in space. Well, they do a lot at the space station. <gasps> they right? do a lot. And now they're planning for the new the new Halo space station. Oh, that are being built. Yeah, that, that, that's planned for 2035. You know what I'm saying? What's a Halo space station? Uh, robots are literally building a space station. Like a ring. It, it's a uh, ring, but it's, it's for tourists, too. But it's going to spin um, on a different gravitational pull. That's for billionaires, not tourists. Or well, they said it's going to have <laughs> pools. for private guests. Yeah. It's going to have pools <laughs> and, and, and tr tropical trees. How and, you going to have a pool in space? <laughs> and shit. It's going to be a room of, like, floating <laughs> water. What the heck? But, yeah, so it's like you look at things like that, and it's just like, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to affect us. And I guess there's this... Uh, 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 what, 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 I don't want to say law because it's not a law. It hasn't even been discussed in Congress. But just this idea It of, soon will be. Let's uh, just say that. Just this idea of, you know, whatever uh, uh, resources we excavate from space, from extraterrestrial bodies... Oh, that they have to keep them out there? They can't bring them... them yeah, 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 I heard something about it's that. It's going to be a separate economy Yeah. from what's happening on Earth. Because you're... Foreign... Bro, germs if I stuff. literally go on the moon and find infinite diamonds... I mine an asteroid. I find infinite gold. Yeah. Can't bring it back. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless you want to go that route. You know what I'm saying? And we're living like kings. You know? My diamond encrusted... Uh, well, yeah, that's kind of tough because you can use that for a lot of a lot of stuff. A lot of good things. For good things! Mm -hmm. so. You know, advanced material. Material technologies and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? But that's what I'm saying. No one wants to be the... Better of that. No one wants to be the hard pill. Well, they don't even let you bring things through like TSA, TSA. from different countries. You think they're gonna let you bring in <laughs> freaking space yeah, stuff, space. space rocks and shit? That's crazy, man. Yeah, it sounds like you're gonna get some symbiotes or sounds something coming back in. On the... Are you gonna entertain any of that shit? Like, cause some of this, we'll see the beginnings of this in our lifetime. Would you entertain like anything what like do you mean? that? Like just like go to space? Yeah, anything space related. Anything space. Uh, if it does I would have never available. put myself in a position where I was liable to get hurt or be at risk. So unless it became like guaranteed. Does the, the guy who went skydiving. Yeah, but I mean. <laughs> the black void of darkness. 
<laughs> skydiving is a lot different than than how space. much more risky does that get? well you gotta look at it this way skydiving you go from point a to point b space you just keep going okay <laughs> skydiving Infinite possibilities in between point A and point B. Well, you jump, you know, you literally one wrong yes. thing. But the first time you go, you're strapped into a professional who's got his shoe and he's got a backup shoe, and then like you get two chances to fuck again, up. Again, again though, <laughs> understand there. It doesn't matter how many points there is. There's always an end result. Space, you just keep space going. Space or uh, ground, land you or just death. Keep going. And also, yeah. it's completely unknown. Yeah. Com yeah. Like you don't know what's gonna kill you out there. Everything. Yeah. Like, but if you get far enough to where we're like, oh, here's a cool planet, and then some weird like creatures start crawling out of the crust of the earth, and it's like King, King Kong and Godzilla are doing the thing, come yeah. out, you know? Yeah, I understand. I completely agree with and that. And that's yeah. not like an unlikely situation because we don't know what the heck's out there. Yeah. It's not impossible out there. Yeah. Exactly. But skydiving, maybe it, I get hit by a, a plane. But that's or known territory. Hit the ground. Yeah. And then I'm dead. But at least it's like. At least you know what happened. Those are my options. <laughs> <laughs> or you, I'm going to land and be You okay. have valid, like, strict, rigid options. A or B. Yeah. Either I land or I die. And in space, it's like, what's going to happen? And people skydive all the time. It's not like a... Um, like, you like can a, skydive from space like the Red Bull guy. Didn't he pass out for a while? He did. Yeah, he, he passed out while he was falling. That's crazy. I couldn't do the that. The G-forces were crazy. Oh, because the G-forces were too strong, not because... Uh, well, probably he's got, like, isn't there uh, thin air up there? Was he in a spacesuit when he, he was He was falling at terminal velocity. Yeah, though he he was in a spacesuit, but I don't think there was any... Yeah, because the air is thin, so there isn't a lot of resistance. I'm surprised. Well, was he really in space? Because he would have burned the fuck no, up. No, he was on, like, the like the edge of the atmosphere, You just seen a little... Boop. <laughs> a little <laughs> boop. Imagine, like, <laughs> they're watching this guy on from the ground. You just see this little reflective white pill. Boop. And it just... <laughs> but then there's, like, different layers of space, too, right? Because uh, wasn't Elon oh, Musk sure. in more uh, you got the stratosphere than... than what's the plain one? You got the troposphere. Was that Blue Origin? Uh, but, I mean, like, Blue Origin flew in a lower Low part Earth of space. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, not the exosphere. Exosphere is, like, that extends to the moon. But I think it was the mesosphere... Because you have the troposphere, which is where we live, the stratosphere, which is with the clouds, the mesosphere, which is like higher flying, like UAVs and shit like gotcha. that. And then you have the exosphere, which is like the edge, the barrier of like Earth in this in space, I guess. But you still there's still like air molecules in that in that area, which is why the Virgin Galactic guy was able to glide. You know, uh, uh, up there in space and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, man, it's just stuff like that. Like, I think about shit like that, you know, while I do what I do now, but, <laughs> you know, yeah, I know. <laughs> Giving my shit, myself, things to worry about. But it's like, if we know what, if we know, and, and, and I don't know, like, we, we live in the age of reason, but, like, doesn't that, like, that's reasonable. What, to think about space? No, to transition, like, to bite the bullet to get to where you need to get. Like, as a population or as a society. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's like, rather than a slow burn. Rather than a slow burn. Yeah, because your point was um, uh, the government's going to make you do whatever they want you to do regardless if it's through branches. Because remember, this was projected to, like, we were projected to deal with the effects of inflation uh, and the housing market for like till 2028. 2028. So we're just going to slowly sink? You no, see what I'm saying? I don't think that's going to happen. No. I don't, I don't know, though. Yeah. Um, These are all predictions. These are all hypotheticals. It wasn't it the, the pandemic came around 100 years after that last uh, big pandemic? And mm -hmm. then you've got uh, 1930s was the... Uh, Great Depression or whatever. Yeah, I believe so. Coming yeah. up on the twenty thirties. So it's following a pretty pretty close. We could see some path. fun stuff coming up here. Nobody Damn, knows man. the future, so that's the yeah, problem. That's yeah, the problem. That's just true. Predict How do you digest often? that shit though? Take it one as it up. comes. Like, it? don't you feel more disconnected? Like, aside from people, you know, like in broader society, like when you when you're driving out, and you know these things, like you don't feel disconnected. From what, uh, like, the world? Yeah. Like, everything, 
All the information is at your fingertips, and you're watching this shit, and you're seeing it, and you're following it, or and you're you're doing some of it in your daily life. You don't feel disconnected. Like there's no times where you just feel disconnected from all of it. I'm not like disconnected from. I feel more involved in it now. This is the most I've ever paid attention to news in my mm-hmm. entire life. You know, uh, this is the first time I've been in a professional environment while there's like actual events going on in mm-hmm. the economy. So this right. is the first time I've actually cared about That's it. That's facts. I never thought about it. And I think about it a lot too because when you look at like the older gener your generation especially, yeah. dude, you guys got. Fuck. Born into this world, into like the crappiest time. You're talking dot com boom, yeah. 9-11, yeah. uh, the great de- or the great recession. It was in 2008. 2008 and yeah. You had um, the pandemic. Even before that, wasn't there like an a influenza or A one A? I pandemic? believe something so. happened in 2012. Swine flu or swine, swine flu. flu. Swine flu. Um, what else? And then the increasing craziness in politics of course yeah, and then you had uh yeah well donald trump come in and a mm-hmm. lot of things happened then and then 2020 is the pandemic now we're slightly in another recession kind of well just, you had the insurrection and then yeah and then you have housing market housing market yeah and bubble. like i was telling you the everything bubble that's what they call it the everything bubble but a lot of a lot of kids um i think um because they've had to see all of this stuff and they've lived through all of this and all the school shootings and everything, they always hear bad news. Mm-hmm. So now, when bad things happen, I don't think that we really react to it the same They're way. They're becoming that we desensitized. Used to. It, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. do you not like? Okay, maybe I used the wrong word. Like desensitized through like shit that would have been earth-shattering news. It's really tragic and it just kind of is like... It's tragic, Well, a perfect example is like the Evaldi shooting where the kid saw the gunman and then ran because he automatically knew that that was bad. So it's not it's it's not like if if that were to happen to me I'd be like oh cool what is that right As or like kid. one of the girls that they interview she said <laughs> she got her friend's blood wiped it on her and played dead yeah you become desensitized to that because like yeah in her mind she already knew to do that well she had thought about that's like you have to think she probably has thought about that before that's what I'm saying you know if this happens I'm gonna I'm what gonna situation would I play do dead that? yeah. But it's kind of tragic. It's tragic. But you have to think. I don't know. I mean, I maybe uh, there's always been bad stuff though. Like yeah. uh, boomers came out of. But now we know world wars and That's Vietnam it. and all that. My my thing is. Oh, another thing that you guys had the Iraqi war too. Yeah. Yeah. Iraqi and Afghanistan. Yep. Iraqi carried over from the nineties, from Daddy to Junior. Yeah, and then, and then the Afghanistan war too. There's yeah. A lot of a lot of serious that was, stuff. That was old Beamy. But then again, every generation said their stuff. There was like the Challenger explosion and all that kind of thing. You know? Was that in your lifetime? That no, was a second. That was Challenger I think and Discovery. That was younger, wasn't it? Uh, was probably when I was younger. I think that was a little bit like in the 80s or something. Yeah, that before was before my time. What about Discovery? Discovery blew up as well. That was in the 98. I think it was in the 90s, yeah. That was when the teacher went up with them. Yeah, yeah, and then she died in the... She got a free trip. That's crazy. Imagine you went a free trip to the chocolate factory. And that's why when you say, would I go to space? <laughs> it depends. That's facts. Yeah. It that's really depends. Facts. That's facts. Damn. Yeah, but it's just like, shit like that. Like, how does that affect your core you? You know, this is just a broad question. I'm, I'm just speaking this way. Um, the way that I react to things like this is mm-hmm. I uh, find a way that I can... <laughs> get a get around it and i yeah. decided to work in finance so i understood how the monetary system <laughs> works and yeah. i can make money because that's what's gonna matter hopefully be able to well not really because if crypto keeps going the way that they're trying to get rid of like the whole mon- like uh what, what's it called fiat currencies fiat and all currencies. that it's like if CBDCs. that goes away then i'm gonna have oh. to completely my guy please divulge your thoughts on this because like i'm already at a point because i've been in it in so long I'm I understand the benefits, but I'm a super hard skeptic on how it's being utilized. Um, one, I still believe there should be regulations. Yes, that's just going to be a regular bank, whatever. Yeah. But it should be like, how do I say? Because banks are private. How? Because okay. How do I say this? 
Because it was the point that I had brought up. Like, if your point, if your job was to escape capitalism, you're not. Because the big players in capitalism are going to be big players in crypto. Because they're the ones who are going to move the markets. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Just without regulation. So now you're getting double fucked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's where you get all these rug pulls. Uh, I brought up the whole sheeb and stuff like that. Where it was just like, you know, oh, if this hits a penny. Or doge. If it hits a dollar, I'll be a thousandaire. That's not a real thing. I'll be a millionaire. <laughs> I'll be a millionaire. Yeah. But meanwhile, the big guy invested a million dollars. And he just needs it to go up a few percentages. Yeah. And he, you know what I'm saying? He's the one walking out with the big bucks. And once yeah, he pulls, true. he's tanking the market. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, that's what I, yeah, yeah. That's he's tough. tanking the market. Cryptocurrency always kind of so I, all you need, scares me. So what's your question? Oh, so like, yeah, because um, it was a while back. I think you are doing like a CBT or something on that where they were just kind of talking about. Which one? Uh, EFTs or something. Um, Not an EFT. It was like crypto shares. Like they were just kind of teaching you just Uh, how do you feel that impacts uh, your sector like what i don't know they're starting to they're start okay it was like right when crypto was up at like sixty thousand and all that they're like okay well we're gonna start trying to incorporate crypto into your like retirement accounts i can't remember what company it was or anything it might have been like not fidelity i don't know specifically off the top of my head but I don't know what they're thinking about it now. It kind of took a crap. But then again, they said, like, what was it? Back in 2016, didn't it lose? It took a oh, fat dookie. It and went from it 20 comes... to, like, 3K. The One problem Bitcoin. is you can't, like, fundamentally measure the value of a Bitcoin. It's all, like, based off of people's emotions and how they feel about it. And yeah. in my opinion, I mean, I might no, be completely that, that, wrong. I can but understand. It makes it so much more... People invest in stocks the same way they invest invest in crypto, and that kind of is like also a problem where they invest in a company because they they Memes. think like I think this stock is gonna go up. <laughs> Memes. <laughs> Why? Basically. Why? Memes. Why? It, it, we, what, what, what do you call the the people who use the apps now? There's a term for them. People who invest, like regular people who invest. Uh, a retail investor. Retail investor. Thank you. Yeah. So it's like. We're, and a lot of people are starting so young now, especially with like internet, TikTok, social media, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, there really is like, do you think that was a good idea to extend that privilege to the general population, knowing that they that there's an institution that requires certain understanding and knowledge to really do something like that? Or now it's a market based off of emotion. I think. Um, a lot of big corporations are owned by like a, a small retail investor isn't going to own a majority share in Netflix or Google or oh, anything hell no, like no. that. Yeah. So when it comes down to uh, voting rights and like swaying the price of the stock, they just don't own enough of it to really influence to it like influence that. I, in my in my opinion, I don't know for sure though. They could mess with stocks like AMC and stuff like that. Mm. But I think a lot of the reason why they were able to do that is once it started getting crazy, a lot of the big institutional investors kind of backed off and said, "We're not even gonna touch this." In you know, <laughs> get involved with that. I got you. Yeah, that a makes lot sense. of people lost money on it too because they were like, "Oh, it's going up. I'm gonna buy it." And I don't know. That that kind of hurts. Did it still hold? Is it where? Where's it? At? I don't know. Where I have no is. clue. I lost interest in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that yeah, was a phenomenon. That. that was a cultural phenomenon. But then again, too, during the fall, it it it, it always starts to skyrocket back up. So Do you I heard that... something about AMC. They have given out free popcorn to their shareholders if they go to the movies. I don't know how legitimate that is, but that's that something huh? I heard. I know Regal's doing that thing now too, where it's like you buy. A subscription. Yeah, and you can go to as many Twenty movies bucks for an unlimited, you unlimited, yeah. unlimited movies and free popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, you will own nothing. Everything and you will, will be literally happy. it will literally be everything will literally be a service. Yeah. Everything will literally be a service. That's not bad though. I mean it's I don't know. Do you think it <sighs> Well, a lot of people don't they don't make enough money to own things. Everyone wants to do stuff now while they're twenty years old. They want and to it's do like now. you know, you want to retire at forty and that's fun, but it's like hey, you could work a lot. You don't need to buy a boat. Well, you yeah, and you could rent a boat. And like for me, I yeah, want that's true. I agree. Like, uh, and a lot of kids, 
a lot of younger people will go out and get to experience a lot of really cool things just because they don't have to own a yacht to go on a big on cruise a yacht, or yeah. you don't have to own a mansion a, a cabin to take a trip up to uh, mm. South Dakota or whatever yeah. you can Georgia, rent an yeah. Airbnb, Airbnb and get the same experience or so you'll get you all want, the experiences for yeah. cheap yeah well not even necessarily cheap some of them are expensive but you don't have to pay you don't have to buy a bungalow in Malibu mm. in order to go and that's spend facts. a weekend there yeah that's, facts. Yeah, that's true Damn. So how do you move the economy if you don't own... Oh, you spend money. You spend money. You that, spend that's money. essentially how the That's literally moves. all it's yeah. going to be. You're just going to be spending money and... It will move. But that's good Good for business. Will it stagnate? Like, okay, because here, here's here's my, my crazy theory, right? When the singularity happens. The convergence. <laughs> In 2030. The convergence, right? So no one owns anything. Right. But robots are doing all the jobs. Where's the money coming from? See, that's tough. What, what kind of work are you going to do? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Where's the money coming well, from? Well, like he said, sell his body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how you got to work out, stay fit. You know? Yeah. yeah you sell, sell your body. Like, are we... But then who are you selling your body to? Sell your ser- uh, well, sell your services online. Well, it doesn't have to be physical. You can have a CGI generator. But with they start making cute robots. Yeah. Cute robots. Uh, CGI generated uh, 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 buy those robots uh, 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 <laughs> adult actors and stuff yeah like, just buy those what? robots that's wild if you don't have the money to buy the robots because you can't sell your body then you're screwed <laughs> then you're gonna go Future to a robot. bank then get you're a bank loan box house. <laughs> you get <laughs> Like, a yes, boxable, yes, a boxable, yeah. a boxable. Yeah. I'm, I'm get a boxable <laughs> I'm dead but yeah. yeah so it's like I don't know I'm thinking crazy far but it's like what happens? What happens? Where does it stop? Where does it stop? Yeah. I, and I think that's where we're getting to. We're near the end of where does it stop? No, I don't know. I think I don't know you if there's think, ever you, you to think, stop. Like how so? Like, Well, people always want to progress. You're always going to be getting better. I don't know if there's ever going to be a cap on that. But you'll have a robot to do that for you. Yeah, they might get to Like that people point. don't have to think for themselves, Caleb. Yeah. It's literally it'll be a weird stimulate. World. Our world revolves around. I can't stimulation. imagine what a world would be like that, though. I can't imagine. That's it. like scary. it's that distance, a uh, distant of a concept to me right. that I wouldn't be able to imagine. Well, you're you're seeing something. You want but entertainment? I'm it's going, all on your phone. Go yeah. TikTok. You well, want to buy something? Because again, uh, uh, again, you're somebody that likes to work, and same thing with me. So it's yeah. like I like to do things with my hands, and it's like if you have a machine to do everything for me, then it's like what the fuck. Like, yeah. Even even the concept of it, it's crazy to me because we were watching uh, your phone, uh, your phone. Oh yeah, it is yeah. We were watching uh, Resident Evil on Netflix that just came out, and literally two sisters are sitting in the car texting each other. You're right next to each other. Just yeah. turn your neck yeah. and say what you need to say. I was flipping. I'm like, you're right next to each other. So it's like the convenience of everything, even communication. It's going to be thrown out the window. So like, because like, I call uh, the reason why I say convergence, because it's just like all aspects that of modern society that we are used to today, that we grew up with today. Mm-hmm. How are they going to interlace once you deconstruct them? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? The working class, well, no one's working. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Intellectuals, well, psh, we got a quantum computer that I answer every fucking question we ever ask it. You see what I'm saying? Like, what are we doing? Like, what are we going to be doing? You see what I'm saying? I have a... Just got a Roomba. I had, I had to sweep for two days now. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because they broom, they mop. Because they broom, they mop. He was, he was joking around yesterday. He's like, soon they're going to have a Roomba to clean the shit out of your toilet. <laughs> and I started uh, laughing. And he's I'm like... Pre- they, I'm pretty sure they have self-flushing toilets now. That's been an old concept. But well, it's like... They have the ones with where you go to a public bathroom and it's got the sensor on it. Make sure people flush. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Or the, the sensor... Air dryer or the sensor. Yeah, wash. Yeah, but nobody likes those, those hand dryer thingies. I don't feel like. I always want paper towels. I, I feel weird because I feel like they blow it right back at it. Just feels the liquid yeah. is just falling yeah. on there. It feels, it feels like gross. there's a mist of bacteria <laughs> in my face. It's like I don't want to. No, the, the, I don't know. The napkin just. The paper towel feels, feels so much better. better. So much better. Speaking about it, though, I'm going to hang a leak real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. You know, we chugging water. I drink a bunch of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we chugging water. We stay hydrated, bro. <laughs> it's hot. It's too hot to be uh, uh, dehydrated out here. But, but yeah. So it's like, shit like that. It's like, 
the conversions, it's like, <laughs> look at me sounding crazy again. It's like, <laughs> you take all aspects of society. But it's not crazy. It's just a concept that people eventually are going to have It's not here accept. yet. Because, like you said, um, a, a great example we can always use is UFOs. They, it sounds crazy, right? But now they're saying you, 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 um, UPA, UP, UAP, UAPs. You gonna get it right? Don't worry. Man. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, one day. <laughs> but that, but that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a, it's not, it's, it's not crazy. It's just in eventuality, it's going to happen. It's yeah, just yeah. It's not a matter of how, but when. When it right. Is. It's not a matter of how are they going to do it. It's when are they going to do it. Yeah, exactly. You know so And it infiltrates, you know, ease of access. You know what I'm saying? It just infiltrates your daily life like that. That's why I tell you. It's like, okay, yeah, you know, you wake up every day. You mm -hmm. do what you do. You don't think about shit like that. It's like, you know, think about shit like that sometimes. Yeah. You that way to. it don't catch you blindsided. Exactly. Like you, you, you don't wake up one day and you're like, okay, what the fuck is going on? Like you right. actually know what's going on. Everyone says, okay, let kids be kids. Okay, what is your kid doing? Yeah, what is your kid doing? You know what I'm saying? What is your kid doing? You know? So it's like... What does it mean to be a kid? In this day and age. Yeah. Because Chuck like, E. Cheese's knew that. What are you looking forward to as a kid in this day and age? You know what I'm saying? Because everything, like you said, is technology-based. Nobody really... Or are you just a well of internet information? A living computer. You know what I'm saying? Internet... <laughs> shoot. I don't know. A living parrot. That's what it is. A living computer. That's what it is. Because it's like, what you automatically assume, okay, this is what it is. Uh huh. You know, but what are your kids doing? Be yeah, what does it mean to be, like you said, Chuck E. Cheese is where a kid can be a kid, but you don't even know what your kids are doing. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're living our life according to what we grew up off of, and that instills our values. Mm -hmm. But it's like, when you know you can see anything and do anything at because remember when when they would say in our in our day when we're in the village when when mom would say go play outside we actually played outside or we, we, when she when they said when she said go play we went outside and played but today you tell a kid to go play and they're on their xbox playstation uh watching youtube or watching tiktok that's what play means to them and it's like and then the old parents like what are you doing well, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> but that's what their concept of playing is in today's society compared to... In the I don't know. I just feel like if we end up... I, I honestly feel like we're on that path right now. So basically, we were saying that the, the concept of... Um, he calls it the convergence, but he said uh, it sound, he sounds crazy. And I said, no, it doesn't because... It's just where every aspect of society just like... Before, like, you know, like, uh, I don't want to say, like, an awakening, but, like, uh, like where we just do shit different. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. an understanding that we've had multiples of those. It's not something that happens over... It's like, after 2012, right? There were some things that you can say and you can't say. Yeah. Things that are offensive, things that aren't offensive. Yeah. You just incorporate, like, okay, that's the new reasoning mm -hmm. in our functioning society. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what I was saying with the younger generations, how they're more inclusive, and it's kind of like mm -hmm. w w w the idea of equality is a lot bigger or more pro relevant now than it was before, and it's kind of incredible to me to think that, I think, was it early 2000s, it was still illegal, even 1990s, it was illegal to have a same-sex marriage. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's, that. an, that's an incredible yeah. change that I feel like kind of gets, like, blown over and i think the last state quickly. to legalize same sex was around well then like, he do an executive order and just say fuck it i'm gonna just gonna, obama right yeah he yeah. passed, his, I he think passed so, an executive yeah. order because every state was being iffy about what they wanted to do with because they left it up to the states. yep so we're not even like very far down the road with that and we've already right. seen a lot of incredible leaps and bounds changes that's facts. i think it's that's facts look i think it's a good thing i mean i, I think it's very um positive mindset to have and i think that that could kind of help grow country or mm -hmm. our country especially if more people are kind of brings people together puts them on the same page that's facts but it also separates people depending on your uh well, outlook on life well it's, it's not it's their belief system it really is um the, the mm -hmm. way they grew up the way they are as human beings um it, it, that's that i think that's the benefactor that that separates 
the the, op- the people who are open minded to concepts like that than compared to um, people that are not. Mm-hmm. Like some people don't believe it's right, and of course others don't care. Mm-hmm. So yeah, some just don't care. The, yeah. There's the I believe it's right. I don't believe it's right. I don't care. But I think the older generations that kind of have that mindset are starting it to is the older generation. go. Uh, not, I mean, maybe not the older generation, not specifically, but I think a lot of that type of thinking is starting to kind of die out with older generations. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. You've got younger kids who are more um, progressive, I would argue, and it's kind of, you can see it changing. Well, you're seeing a resurgence in, like, especially with, you know, internet culture, like, really... Um, ingraining themselves like making these kids like i don't want to say crazy but they're trapping these kids in a bubble where it warps their view of reality you understand what i'm saying like it's like i i I mentioned something it's like they believe that's what the world is like right okay you understand what i'm saying like do you ever feel that could that that could be a detriment where it's like okay here's all the information but Curating, but like I said. Also, like, doesn't that depend on the parent and like my, on how they raise that My child issue too? with any direction we go with society is, do I know as much as I can know? You see what I'm saying? Like, is this information curated? I'm not going to outright just say, okay, I don't believe it. But, like, I like to catalog information that I take in and add it to my reasoning. And... To kind of show that there are nuances and world And you views. come up with your own conclusion. And then I come up with my own conclusion until I am wrong. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's absolutely fine. No one's absolutely right. No one's absolutely wrong. Mm-hmm. We were all born ignorant, all educators, all philosophers, all doctors, everything. All yeah. scientists, we were all born ignorant. We all got our information from someone who did the something, who did the something, who did the something. Yeah. Well, that that's like, so... People, people have, like, their opinions and everything. It's like, when does your opinion change? And I've heard, I don't know what it was, but it was like a quote. Uh, someone said, when the facts change, I change my mind. So it's kind of like that mindset about being open to other points of view. And if the facts change on what you know, being able to accept those changes right. and formulate a, a new opinion or incorporate that into your line of thinking. I feel it. That's facts. That's facts. Because, like... For me, it was always like, I don't want to be like, because I always, because I always say, okay, this is my reality. My reality can be completely wrong, but it's what it makes sense to you. It's what makes sense to me, and it's shown progress. And like my thing is, do what you want as long as you're not hurting people. That's yeah. literally it. But that's a hard concept for a lot of people to grasp. Yep. Yeah. Because they want you to be on this side or that. Right. You can't have... Like, there's this self-righteous complex where it's like, you know, I have the answers and I'm here to help you. I'm here to... It's like, no. Sometimes it's like you give someone an answer and they do the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. That's fine. That's within their line of reason. Of course, some people, you know, go crazy and then they end up hurting people in the process. And that goes with anything like if it doesn't have a net positive a net gain anything then that's where you're like okay maybe we should limit what are you thinking or like i don't don't know if you if you understand where i'm coming from Uh, i get that but it's also tough (laughs) how can you let people just do anything and say oh don't hurt anybody it's like maybe you didn't intend on hurting somebody but you still did but you still did you know that's facts that's like superman yeah, yeah. <laughs> man of steel. Best intentions. Best intentions. Best intentions. He's like, I'm saving the planet, but you killed a couple million people. Yep. That's wild. That's wild. I don't know, man. Uh, that nuclear reactor they're building in that mountain is that where we start seeing superhumans? Is that thing gonna oh. like collapse and the, then the freaking? Well, as superhuman. long as it's not near here, we're good, right? I mean, I I could take some superpowers. Do you, <laughs> do you have any positive or negative? All right, off of. Anything you understand about nuclear energy, and this is a broad question. I say nuclear energy. Do you think positive or negative? I mean, it has a negative connotation just because it it's nuclear, nuclear. But gotcha. I don't know. Gotcha. I just. And I, I just, think that the only reason why it has the negative connotation is because of the nuclear bomb that happened in Hiroshima. 
Right, we've seen... but Or the yeah. fact that nuclear is just associated with bombs. Yeah. With bombs, that's true. Damn, man. That's tough. But aren't, like, submarines nuclear-powered or whatever, that's and what they I'm stay saying. underwater for months at a time? And, like, we have months at a time. so much more cleaner and advanced ways of harnessing, like... Not even with fusion. I'm just talking about with regular, with the big old yeah. Homer Simpson. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Like, we've gotten so advanced. But oil and gas is still profitable. Damn. You know? And they're explosive. Why? Why? And the metal, We too. were doing steam power, damn it. Steam power. We should have just found cool. another one. We should have just found another source of steam. Of making steam. That's it. Plenty That's water. it. Like, that's what's crazy to me. Like, I don't understand. So what was the, your question? What was my question? Positive or negative thoughts on nuclear. Yeah, that yeah. That was the question. That was the we question. It was it. just a broad... Because, like, I just wanted to test the theory. Because, like, like I said, I just yeah. read up on it. And it was just I like, think a lot of people are going to have, in, unless you actually work in a nuclear like, you gotta, type situation. Okay, right. Are always gonna have negative. What's the biggest? What's the biggest clapback for going all electric? You're not really reducing the carbon footprint because you still need to burn natural gas to produce e- electricity for the grid that powers your cars. Nuclear. That's it. And it's cheaper. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of alternative and energy it's sources. Though. But uh, like, if we're being realistic, not even because. It's really the only thing that's been implemented alongside natural gas, coal and natural gas. Mm-hmm. And we've seen the results. And the results are net positive. You see what I'm saying? So it's like just taking that simple step, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The population is scared about, bruh, give the population time. You know what I'm saying? It's not like the day you. You hit the switch, it's gonna blow up. See, but this and is wipe the half the but map see, out. this is the biggest thing though. A lot of people, a lot of people don't think about the dangers of what they do every single day. People would guess, guess Hop about in a car. Uh, you're in a freaking. You're in a metal tube that has a lot of gasoline that's very explosive. explosive. If any type of heat touches it, and shrap. moving at seventy miles, and moving at seventy miles an hour. Relatively, you're or, literally. Or, or, imagine if it was invisible. Imagine if they made all cars invisible. Would you still drive a car? No. <laughs> Hell no. Because... I'm just kind of questioning why they're making invisible cars. <laughs> because I wouldn't know the distance, the length, the depth. Like, like think, think crazy. Like, just put your imagination. On. Imagine if they made all. Like, th- this is how I rationalize reality. <laughs> I put it in a illogical or unrealistic scenario Mm -hmm. and then i rationalize it into real world terms you know what i'm saying so like imagine if the car was invisible imagine watching a human fly by you at At 70 70 miles miles an hour and be like yeah i want to do that i would do that (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah that'd be awesome man but like or or you see a whole bunch of uh, people in the metal uh invisible tube invisible flying through tube the air. Just floating through the air. Yeah, I wanna do that. <laughs> that would be pretty crazy if transportation. That would be <laughs> Oh my god. You know what I'm saying? But like in, in terms of that, it's just like I don't think people think of it like that. And it's like you get in the metal tube every single day, like you said. Going it's to, all about risk. It's risk every and reward. Every, you you waking up every day is a risk. You wake up every day, yeah. and, like, in the first eight minutes, you have the highest chance of having a heart attack. <laughs> Why? Uh, because your blood, like, your body is literally, like, waking up. Like, your brain is restarting. Like, your your normal bodily functions are starting. Especially remember, when an alarm clock rings, yeah. you, like, shock yourself yeah. out of sleep. Because remember, when your body, when you go to sleep, your body is, is literally just, like, re- replenishing itself. It's like in a, 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 a sleep mode where it'll you know, distribute nutrients that you took in for the day, repair muscles, body parts, and stuff like that, and, and blah, blah, blah. So when you wake up, you're literally, like, restarting. Like, you're, it's like a shock, you know, to your being, your conscious, your body, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So that raises your blood pressure. Huh. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, heart attack. What was I saying? You could die pretty quick anyway. You, get, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but it, you don't think it, about that in your day-to-day life. That's not something you really okay. consider. Well, people, like, well, his concept, his uh, idea was people are always throwing, like he was saying, the nuclear. 
Yeah, afraid to live off a of nuclear power. Exactly, but then again, they don't don't understand the day to day risk that they take, and and the reward from it. Yeah, is nuts. Mm -hmm. It's nuts from going nuclear. I think the only thing is the waste. The yeah. Okay, but we understand waste. how to. Do, we have the technology in the past twenty years from all the Love not even twenty. 80, almost 80 years, or 60 years, let me say 60. After 60 years, we understand all of this. Mm -hmm. We understand molecular uh, 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 chemistry and the, the decomposition of, of radioactive material. We understand half-lives and time frames and what type of containment we need to put these things in, uh, what we can do, other alternatives. You see what I'm saying? We understand this but stuff. But where do you essentially put it? Yeah, you can contain it, but where is it all going? Yeah, and what happens with it? How long does it have to that's the biggest sit issue. be coming before it's yeah, not like that's radioactive the well, At anymore. some point, we will develop something but as of to right now, But as of right now, they don't have that, which okay, is probably but why. But you know what will push you forward? Taking that risk to get that limitless energy to push you forward to develop those technologies. But how long has certain countries been using it it's but, rare but it's still rare. haven't had found that solution though what do you mean they have why do you think to get germany, rid of to get why rid do you of think waste germany and france what do you mean to get rid i'm of asking you no i'm asking you a question so you're saying if we if if we put forth the effort because uh nuclear waste there's such thing as nuclear waste right. all right and the only thing that we can do is put them in containers but how do you get rid of it without it contaminating anything instead of just storing it. All right, you know what my caveman brain wants to say? What? Shoot it into space. But that's the yeah, worst that, thing. Shoot it in the fucking yeah, space. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Yeah, that's the why worst. is that not a good idea? Because they've shoot already... it into the sun. Because look at the damage we've already no, done no, no. to the earth. You want to start doing pause, it out there? Shoot it into the sun. How do you how do you know what that might do? What if what it hits you... something along the way? Guys. We're giving you hypotheticals. No, no, no. I'm giving you literal, like, real. The sun is... Can fit a hundred million. Earths. But how far away is it? You, you're gonna blast a rocket out there with full of nuclear waste, and what we're happens literally if it gets launching by sixteen something? rockets. Of, uh, 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 if you if you want to talk about cost basis, we can have that solved. We can have if the uh, only objective for this thing is to shoot this thing into into sun. We're not gonna give it no complicated technology. Mm -hmm. We have guiding systems to track it to the sun. We've sent like three satellites to take pictures of the sun. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that'll all be part of a system. Okay. You see what I'm saying? That will be incorporated into the system. This isn't going to be government funded. You know it's not going to be government funded because the government's never going to do it. Mm -hmm. That's too much money. But again, like I said, the only reason why I was giving the hypothetical is because that's right. the route that people always take. Shoot well, we space. have nuclear waste. No, and... not shoot in the space. Oh. <laughs> like, the negative stuff. No, no, not shoot in the space. Right. Like, like, talking about the, like leakage, environmental. Yeah, yeah, because that's the first thing right. they don't throw at you if that's you bad. do say something like that. If we do want to go nuclear, uh, what do they do in the, with the nuclear waste, essentially? Right. So. I understand that. Right, because we're already. Dump it in the ocean. <sighs> We have containment centers. I know, right? We have containment Teenage facilities Mutant Ninja for Turtles. that shit. <laughs> oh, oh, we'll finally get kaiju? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Get Godzilla? Yep. Yep. Like, yep. I'm waiting. That oh lizard. Oh, my God. Kong King. Kong King. Okay. Be, Kong King. Awesome. Okay, there. buddy. But yeah, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. I can understand that fear. Yeah. I can understand that fear, the, the ecological damage that it can... Like you make one mistake, you you're fucking the earth for however long that thing is exactly, radi radioact yeah. radi radio radioactive radioactive for. So I can understand it. But for me, caveman brain, shoot it into space. Shoot it into the sun. The sun. Mm. The sun that has that can power the earth for billions of years. Infinite energy. You see what I'm saying? Shoot it into the sun. You don't want to shoot it into Mars or whatever or create this trash a, a globe around the earth and shit shoot it into the sun we've sent plenty of things into the sun gotcha you see what i'm saying you can do one sun shooting every 10 years so after 10 years get 10 years worth of your nuclear weights we're gonna put on a big ass rocket and shoot it into the sun <laughs> one trip every 10 okay. years okay that's not bam bad. now you still have limitless energy not limitless but near limitless energy cleaner energy because okay. it is clean. It's just the waste or the byproduct of it that is unclean. But the energy is clean because it's not producing any... Pollution. Pollution. Any off-gas, nothing. None, none of that. You see what I'm saying? 
And then you partner with one of these billions of space agencies coming up, these private space companies, and every 10 years, you shoot a rocket full of nuclear waste into the sun. The end. Okay. I know it's not that easy. No, 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 no. I'm but, saying, I, like I said, you just gotta be ready. You just gotta be no, ready for those questions because people are gonna always throw those type no, of questions no, no, at you. That's understandable. That's understandable. I need you guys to keep me based in in reality. In reality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got I you, man. You and we, now we know what to do with our nuclear waste. Yeah, so. shoot into, shoot the, into sun. the sun. It's not that easy, but we'll do it. It's gonna be. It was here. <laughs> yeah. We don't know what's gonna happen. I know, right? It, the but. sun was here before us. It's gonna be here after us. You think a couple rockets of nuclear waste is gonna put the sun out? No. Nah. Come on. Uh, yeah, I don't even think it'll be able. It Come will on, get bro. near it before it the starts melting. The sun gave us this life on this planet. It gave us literally everything. We are from stars. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, stardust. We're made of stardust. Everything, every, all matter is made from stardust. What is nuclear waste gonna do? To mutate you? He's gonna mutate the sun. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> Start developing. Oh weird. man, <laughs> a mutant sun. That'd be nuts. Oh my god. It gets a face on it. <laughs> oh, uh, freaking tally tubbies. No, oh, the god. sun is. <laughs> That's wild. I thought that's what he was going to say. Wild. Oh, God. You know what? That would be nuts. Oh, if we man. shot nuclear waste into the sun in the Teletubby video. <laughs> that's, what, that's what greeted us every day. He <laughs> says good morning. Start singing a song. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Holy shit. Yo, that'd be crazy. Oh, that'd be crazy as hell. Oh, Jesus. What were oh, you about man. to say, Jeff? Um, I completely forgot. Lost your thought. Yep. Lost my train of thought. Yep. Lost my train of thought. But, uh. It's looking about that time. It's about that time. Are we sure this time? <laughs> um, I will really quit this time. I will actually quit. We'll literally just we'll literally just put an episode up tonight. Say sorry for not having no a audio. No, no. Oh. You just put the the soundless point on. <laughs> Everyone's like, "There's no audio. There's no audio." Yeah, we know. We know. <laughs> Sorry. Just, oh my god. Oh, just man. just imagine what our lips are saying right That's now. Wow. Uh, but that'd be nutty. Caleb, you would see me cry for the first time. Bro. Yeah. But Caleb, that would be touching. Would be we're, touching. we're gonna ask you the question again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, Jeff. I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to ask him the question. If I if I could say one thing, to what do you want to leave off with our audiences? Um, if you could say one thing, whether it be friends, family, people you care about, strangers, society, uh, what message do you have for humanity? Be better. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, uh, 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 if yeah, if you got you got something you want to do, just go out there and do it. Don't be afraid to take risks. Yes, because sir. don't be afraid to take an L, man. You got one yeah. life to live. Live yep. it. L's have more knowledge than getting the dub the first time. Mm -hmm. Very cliche, but a lot of people don't really try for their goals. So yeah, yeah. go out That's there facts. and get it. That's facts. Thanks That's for having facts. me on here, guys. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely, uh, boy. So, guys, thank you for joining us at the tabletop. Thank you, thank you. Again. <laughs> They don't know that. Yeah. Nope, they don't. <laughs> um, you guys can catch us on Tuesdays and Thursdays on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Deezer, TuneIn iHeartRadio and Amazon Music and you can catch our ugly mugs on Wednesdays and Fridays on YouTube. Thank you guys for joining us at the table top and again thank you Caleb for finally showing up because we've been talking about you a lot. <laughs> You're yeah. definitely coming back again and gas you up. Man. Yep, gas you up or like I said we'll be ready to do a body double. And yep. then they just listen to us talk about nuclear power. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well that was towards the end though. Yeah, I that guess was that was. End, yeah. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whether you want to bring somebody with you or not, that's that's up to you. But um, yeah, uh, trust me, you're not boring. If you were, you not boring. if you were, if you know. were, you wouldn't be on here. So, <laughs> I'm no, joking. That was fun. Thanks for having me yeah, on, guys. Yeah, I appreciate for you. Sure. But uh, sure, sure. you guys have a good day. Take care, y'all. Y'all have a great week. Thank uh, you. <laughs>